Good afternoon. Really looking forward to this, guys. Absolutely, Hazel. And so Stephen and I, and there's the picture with the trophy. Who will get their hands on it at the end of the day? Well, it's hard to call a winner, Stephen. No, really looking forward to this. Two best players in the world today. In Thank you, possibly the, the second most important tournament in the world. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. This is what you want of a final. Mm, decent break off. Anytime you don't leave a long pot on, you're happy with it. I don't think you can get past the blue to play for the red on the left hand side of the table. can just get to the line of reds just below the pink for a return to Bork. Got that a little bit too thick. What I can't wait to see, John, is who's first to stamp their authority on this final. Really looking forward to these first four frames. Can run you. We produced the form of that last frame last night against Marco Fu. Good opening red. Knew he was running into the second red, but played with that extra bit of pace. And he's on the black. I mean, apart from winning the UK title. The incentives for you know personally for both players. Ronnie wants to prove himself against the world number one, the world champion. Mark Selby as world number one, world champion, wants to put the sort of people's champion in his place. Prove why he's the best. Absolutely. He's been world uh, number one Eight. now for a while, and as you say, reigning world champion. So there's more than this UK title and the prize money at stake. Reputations are on the line. Nine. Well, he's got a nice angle on the blue. Bring him back amongst the reds. He's just having a look, which is the easier red to play for. And just undecided. There is a red immediately above the black, but has he run far enough to be on that red? The fact he's looking at the red on the right hand side of the table tells me he's not. Just an inch or two short, a perfect position. Thank you. Seven, 14. So although sometimes we talk about, you know, you need to take time to settle, these two players, I you know you they don't expect to be on it straight away. So we disappointed, Ronnie. Only scoring 14 there. Thank you. We're playing this long red with a lot of drag on the cue ball. It's lovely though, isn't it, when you've not taken your opportunity and then immediately you come back to the table with another chance. One. Well, he did play it with drag, but he wanted to make that red a little bit thinner. He'd like to have been straighter on the black. Now, he'd like to be on the red immediately above the black. If he's on it, that's good. If he's not, Eight. he's in a spot of bother. 
Oh, there's another red that goes. You need to play that with Nine. left hand side just to get into it enough. So the, not the angle he was looking for on the blue. Yeah, all these top players, Stephen, they set such a great story winning the first frame, don't they? Get that first frame on the board as soon as you can. Yeah, I was liking it to top boxing matches, whoever gets the, the first good punch in. 14. Get that first frame. What a gift this is. To be able to play a positional shot and knowing that you can 15. play the shot left-handed. Just overrun that slightly. There's the sidebar. 69 he needs to get to to leave snooker, so another 33 points required at this visit. 23. Just lost the cue ball slightly though. Yeah, he's having to work hard. He's not had it in, on a string as we normally expect. But now. Looks to be in absolutely perfect position. 28. Should win the first frame from here. 29. Beautifully played, Cannon. 36 37 that 44 basically equates to another couple of reds needed looks a formality 45. <laughs> but after the few scares he had last night, Ronnie, against Marco Fu in the semi final, he'll take nothing for granted. Red in a cover required. 52. Mr. Red with the rest. And that's really the only chance he's had. 53. Yeah, Ronnie will know that when he's in this position, he needs to leave Mark. If he's not going to clear up, he needs to win the frame. So he might make at least three or four snookers to stop him coming to the table. 61. Yeah, that's a fair point. Mark Selby needs a couple of snookers, you know he's going to carry on. And Ronnie likes a free-flowing game. 67. 68. I'm sure Ronnie would love to make the century here. 74. That would be making a statement. 75. 82. 83. Not the perfect angle on the black to get on the awkward red. That's why he's playing the pink. A bit more difficult pot. Needs an angle on the red. Just about got one. 89. Wonderful. 90. Now, just
just going to miss the yellow and the brown, and this looks absolutely inch perfect. It's beautiful. Ninety-nine. The perfect start. One hundred and two. This the one hundredth century break of the tournament. One hundred and eleven. One hundred and seventeen. Well, you could say you needed two chances, oh, but the second one oh, is absolutely sublime. Well, nothing Mark could do about that. So that was Ronnie O'Sullivan in his best, and he takes the first frame in style. Well, with Mark's break off, he has left a possible pot to the left corner. Just going to avoid the black and the red to the right of it if Ronnie plays it. Well, he avoided it. But the red, the only one he thought he could leave, came back up to the balk end with the cue ball, but Unless the red goes into the middle, I don't think Mark will be playing it. Well, it does go in the middle, but it's too dangerous. You can play a good safety here. Catching a ball colour full in the face. It's never going to be a good safety when you do that. It was quite an aggressive safety shot. Went into the pack quite thick. Let's open the reds up. Could be a ploy of his today. Get the game opened up. This is a good shot for Mrs. Brown. Excellent safety shot from Matt Selby. Yeah, an absolute cracker. <laughs> Even though both these players, great potters and break builders, you just feel that the tactical exchanges are going to have a big bearing on this. And Ronnie. Got to play a good shot now to get this safe. It's not straightforward by any means. You know it's tough when Ronnie O'Sullivan takes this long to think about it. He's looked at the red that's near the right corner. He can't play safe off that. If he played the cross double on that red, more likely than not, he'd get the double kiss. Sometimes in this situation, a player decides, well, I might as well try and pop my way out of trouble. But I don't think he's got a pot on that he'd fancy getting. Well, he's found the gap between the red and the blue. And all things considered, he content himself with that. Yeah, 
look at the Reds now. In respect of these two players, one mistake would almost definitely cost you the frame. Looks a bit pacey. Well, as you said, Stephen, the red spread as they are, next one in, you'd think he could make a frame winning contribution, but there's always pressure that if you miss this shot, you could leave them for your opponent. But in it goes right in the heart of the pocket. It's hampered by this red and the left cushion for the pink. Also the cue ball going away from the reds. So a good pot needed now, the one to the left corner. A finish cut. Well, he didn't want to be kissing Eight. the pink. Anyway, he got the pot and that was the most important thing. Yeah, strange path the cue ball took. I thought he'd play that with check side to avoid cannons. Thirteen. Fourteen. Already John looks a completely different Ronnie O'Sullivan to the match last night, apart from the last frame, doesn't it? Looks completely focused on his job today. Yes, and uh, when you've come through a match like that, we always say how much does it take out of you. But the way he finished the match would have given him a real tonic for this final today. Under the utmost pressure, he showed that he was informed to to win a frame, and with the break he did. Yeah, I also think when you 20. snatch a victory from the jaws of defeat, it's, it completely relaxes you for your next match. It's like you've been given a lifeline. You should have been out. Marco Fu had potted an easy green with the rest last night. He'd have been in this final. 25. Yes, there was a few swings and roundabouts last night. 26. But that's the nature of the game. You've got to pot the game balls, and sometimes when you get near the winning line, you get a bad contact, as Marco did. Yeah, absolutely. It's not Ronnie's fault. Marco wasn't able to pot game ball. That's the sport of the top level. Working these very well at the 31. moment, but with only really the blue to play for, pink out of commission. Got to keep finding this good angle on the blue. 32. I think the red you'd like to be on at some time is the red that's... There's one tight to the cushion. There's a red just above it. Oh, he's took his eye off the pot. 32. Thinking about three or four shots ahead rather than the one in front of him. You've seen Ronnie go back to his chair and he makes an action with his right hand as if he decelerated. That's the action he wanted to put on the, the cue ball.
It's an unexpected miss and an unexpected chance for Mark, but it's certainly not easy. Black out of commission, blue and pink, not available. And if he lands on the pink, this will be, well, he's going to land on it, but not in a possible position. He'll do well to make 30 at this visit. Now this red, the one just above the one that's tight on the cushion, that's the one I thought Ronnie ah. might try and get on. And I think he did when he missed the blue. Because this red may clear a path for the black in a few shots time. He used all the pocket and because he hit it too thin, it's gonna run past the bolt line. Six. Didn't hit it in the middle of the pocket. That's why he got an extra bit of pace on the cue ball. I enjoyed looking at that picture, if not the black, the red above the black, certainly. So that was a the red that both players would like to have gotten rid of. Well, again, we presume he's obviously taking this red on. Because if he was playing a safety, he'd have tucked up behind the brown. It's a test of queuing. Quite an aggressive play, that John, to leave himself that red. Thank you. It certainly down, was. I think, to be honest with you, he liked a little bit more angle on the pot to play the run through. It was probably a little bit straighter than he wanted. But yeah, it certainly was a, an attacking shot. As Stephen said, he could have rolled up behind the brown quite easily. But such was the position of the colours. It was always going to be very difficult to make any sizeable contribution. And this red will pot, but it looks as though in potting it is going to run into the reds that are close to the top cushion, so it's not going to be on anything, you wouldn't have thought. Well, he's coming round to have a look at the potting angle. <coughs> He'll trust the luck as to whether he can get on a colour or not. <coughs> Looks like he's deciding to play safe off the red. Don't blame him for that. And also an opportunity to bring the black into play. These are the type of frames that... If Ronnie can win the majority of these frames, he's going to be hard to stop today because you've got to fancy him to score heavily if he gets in early in the other frames. These are the ones I think that are going to decide this final. Covered the red that's near to the right corner, as you can see. Well, does this one go, the one that Mark's playing? Will it pass the red and black? <coughs> May have done. Now, is there a gap between the blue and pink? Well, there's a gap, but not enough for Ronnie to get to the red that's closest to the corner pocket. Played that well. <laughs> well, that would have been good, but for the kiss on the green, I'm not saying he's left the pot on. But you feel now if. Well, there's a possibility this red may cut in, but I think Ronnie will be more concerned in trying to get this cue ball in behind the green here. And 
With all the reds on this side, if you get in behind the green, it's bound to be a snooker. Is it going to drop in the pocket? No. thick in order to get the cue ball back to that right hand corner of the table but this was a problem he was going to be moving reds away a long way away from that one when he does miss he misses by a long way either gets them or misses them by a long way doesn't he yeah I think it's just the timing I think he Put a little bit of trace of right hand side in it, and because he just hit it a little bit firmer, trying to hold the cue ball, that right hand side pushed it into the red, the cue ball, and that's why he hit it too thick. It's amazing sometimes how many times do we see it when a player plays a poor safety and then your opponent misses and that poor safety gets you in and that's what's happened here but still not a great chance nicely brought oh I was gonna say brought a couple of reds into play now Mark desperately needs this red just to the right of the black to be able to be potted if it isn't then that's the black out of commission as along with the pink and blue does the black go I think the reds just stopped enough time so it's not well, maybe he hasn't. If he goes for that, he is hitting the red and black at the same time. I thought perhaps it just stopped in time, the red. We'll soon know when he plays this red whether he thinks the black will pass the red. He needs that black to be possible. And obviously he thinks it Six. does. And now has he gone far enough down the table? Can he get through to it? Shake of the head tells you he's not. Just a fraction short. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm glad you can see the funny side well, of it. Steve. <laughs> it's a, it's, Nine. it's, it's laughing, but it's, it's. It's horrible. I mean, he just... How has he landed there? Got into it too much, didn't he? He wanted to stun off the side cushion and he got too much backspin. Hmm. In a spot of bother now and he's still 13 points behind. Tremendous hit. Tremendous hit. Touch absolutely perfect. Well played. And more so because he'll be so disappointed to have finished there. Brilliant hit. Yeah, just an example of his fantastic temperament. I mean, the, the red, he didn't get on the black, snookered himself, then pots a good green. And stick himself behind the pink, but had the composure to play that brilliant shot. Well, we're only be a little bit disappointed in the cue ball tight to the ball cushion. 
And Mark's just come round now and see if there's a possibility of a plant on these two reds along the top cushion. There's quite a bit of distance between the two. It's not guaranteed. And if he doesn't get it, he could leave the red on. It's almost as if he has to play this cushion first, because he has to hit the first red so thin. I don't think he was ever playing the plant there. Yeah, so I said before, both players, if they get in early, will score heavily. But these frames, I think, are going to be so important in this final. Well, is he taking this on? Ooh, well, he did. So close. But now this is a chance. Another one for Mark Selby. It was certainly a very aggressive short choice, this. Yeah, I wonder if he'll leave an angle in the black to take those two reds away from the side cushion. Or just make sure the, the points with the two reds below the black. One. And yeah, he's going to play the second of those shots. I thought he might have... The black's in a perfect position. I thought he might have been tempted to finish low in the black. Eight. Red and the black will put him in front in this frame. But still an awful lot to do. All to be fit and young. Nine. Just a little bit careless there. He'd like to have been straighter on this black. Well, I'll be looking to finish, I think, high on the black here. So he can stun off the black cushion with that left hand side. Disturb those two reds. Oh, be high, but maybe not that high. So I think he can still make the cannon. That's maybe just a, an inch or two too far to make this unmissable. Well, he's had a look where he'd like to leave the cue ball, but this is no easy pot. That was no gimme by any means. When he goes back to his seat, he's now got an 11 point lead. Take your seats quickly, please. Thank you. Well, he could have played a better safety than that, Ronnie. He left a chance of a pot on here. Mark's going to have to dig down a little bit on the cue ball to avoid the kiss on the black. Good pot. But I don't think it's going to be on green or brown. It's just hit it too hard. One. I think there's quite a bit of snooker left in this frame yet particularly the awkward last red and the way the blue and pink are situated. Fields just roll into the yellow and get the snooker with the green. Oh, he decided to play the snooker Mark behind the blue. 
Well, we know how, how good a safety shot, safety player Ronnie is, John, but would you make Mark's favourite to win most of these frames? Well, uh, that is the question that we've been asking, and yeah, I suppose tactically, mainly because I think he's got a little bit more patience. patience. Absolutely, that's the word. Mark's LB4. Just a fraction. Very severe, the miss rule, when you see something like this. Yeah. Ronnie's held the position, so the referee couldn't know. But he was a bit pacey with that white, once he was a little bit slower. So if he is the red, he's not going to knock it on. Just missed it the other side, has he? Foul, and a miss. <laughs> Mark's LB4. Stand up, Ronnie, you'll give yourself a bad back, son. Yeah. Missed it again. Foul and a miss. Mark Selby, four. In this type of frame, these points are valuable. They really are. This is where the misrule is very severe for me. I mean, the, his first effort, I mean, he's missed it by an absolute millimetre. Needs to hit it and quick. This time. Well, yes. He hits it. He hits it. Ronnie didn't know. I'll be honest. And with those 12 points now, Mark Selby just needs red and a colour. It's a big lead, the way the balls are situated, that is. Well, that'll help Ronnie a little bit, developing the blue slightly. I don't know whether there's a thin cut on this red. Now Mark's having a look at just clipping the red onto the black. He clips the red onto the black and hits the black full ball. The red will stay near the top cushion. bit thin. Oh, but he may have had a result here. Is it there or can Mark just get past the pink? He can and this red then is cuttable. Yeah, it's a very thin cut and, and the problem with this shot, if you get close you can leave the red over the pocket. too thin. Not applause, but he'll be disappointed to have missed the cut. I don't think Ronnie can cut this in, it's too thin. This looks pretty good. to get the snooker as well, as you can see, he's bringing the red into the middle of the table. Missable this, using a lot of right-hand side. If you hit it full, you could send it towards a pocket. All things considered, he hit that red just about as good as he could. That's what he's growing at from me. He gets out of snookers, he never leaves a pot on. 
I know there's a, a small percentage of it is luck, but most of it is skill. First frame was over, just over 10 minutes, so we're approaching half an hour for the second frame. Humped by the black, this is a tough shot for Ronnie. And he's caught it too thin, has he got the cover with the green? That's what he's got to hope for. I think by the look on his face, he just about has. Yep, there you see it. Bit fortunate. We'll mark having a look if he comes off the right hand side cushion, but I have to play it a lot of side and it's not as if the, the red is right over the pocket. He's wondering if he can come off the side with Lots of left hand spin and maybe pot this red. Mm, that was the problem. Now has he left it? He has. But it's not a straightforward run to the line. Never was going to be. Ronnie 24 points behind red colour and the six remaining colours. Doesn't matter what, whichever colour he takes, that's what's required. Big ask. Tried to cannon the blue there and bring it into play. Four. Six. Nine. Mm, well, White's have caught the ball a little bit fuller, but he's still got an angle to come off the ball cushion behind the blue. He'd love to play the counter on the pink. Thank you. Well, that's two Ronald shots Sullivan, nine. he's missed so far in this match with the rest. It's unusual for Ronnie. Brown's there, so that puts Mark Selby out. 19 points to lead, with just 18 remaining. It drops, the frame's over. Nine. Ronnie won't be coming back to the table now. And then goes a double. Complete contrast to the first frame. And Mark Just Selby takes frame. it. It Mark took Selby. over 33 minutes. But he'll be sipping that water a lot better. He's levelled. It's one each. Ronnie gets frame three underway. Once again, decent break off shot. Yeah, 
yeah, looking at it, you, the first thing you look for, look where the black is, nicely in the open. As a snooker player, sometimes your heart sinks when the black gets blocked up straight away. Where's the cue ball going? Ooh. Well, that was a good escape. This will be an interesting safety, how thick Ronnie decides to play off this pack. Is that a thin one or do you try and open things up? Well, it was a thickish one and he just flicked off the green, which is giving him a very good cue ball. Knocked a red towards the corner, needs a cover, hasn't got one. Now, is he going to be on a colour? What? If he drifts past the brown, he'll be on the green. Just. Four. That was it. Well-controlled positional shot. Unfortunately, the black out of the commission at the moment, it appears. Five. Pink's not available in too many pockets. and Having screwed off to second red, not got the perfect angle on this blue. Not whether it's worth playing a cannon into the cluster, just to the right of the pink. Well, he'd be wishing he had played it now. Has he got an unintentional cannon there Ten. on the red? The way he's played it, he wanted to miss everything. In fact, it was the pink. Oh, but made that look easy. And that was a tough pot. Yeah, definitely. One of the shots of the match so far, that one. Pressure on these visits to the table, John, for Ronnie. If he doesn't want to get drawn into those frames like the second one, he's got to make the most of these opportunities. 14. Yeah. Every time he gets in, he wants to make it a one visit victory. He's played this well as well. 15. Lovely angle on the, the blue. Just have a look at the possibility of a plant, red below the pink. He'd love to get the black into play, but he can't. Take too many risks. You've got to take what's there until an opportunity arises. Now, does this red to the right of the Point. black? Well, if he was, if it had rolled a little bit further, he could have potted it. I don't think you can pot it without moving the black. So it's back up for the blue. But he was just 21. a fraction there, wasn't it, from being absolutely perfect. He'll play it again. He always had the insurance of the reds to the left 56. corner. If he didn't get on that red, maybe this red though clears the black, possibly to the left corner, maybe 27. not. But if he is playing for the red next to the black, it has to be dead straight on it, I think, to play the, back, the black to the same pocket. Now looking at Ronnie's face there, I don't think he's got the best angle on this blue. Oh, 
They're all straight, so all you could do was roll it in. So a little bit of work to do Don't now with to... the cue ball to get back up for the blue. Didn't go in the middle of the pocket. He's going to kiss the blue. How's he kissed it? 33. Well, it could have been worse, but it could have been better. Yeah, a couple of choices here. You can put two cushions into the bunch if you wanted, or I may just play for the, the red that's closest to the black cushion. Yeah, the second shot is played. Thirty-eight. You'd love to have just run past the black there. Played for the blue. Overhit it. You would think possibly the green coming off the side cushion, maybe into the bunch. And once again, have a look at the possibility of the plant. We'll soon know whether he thinks it's on. If he plays the brown, he's playing the plant. If he plays the green, he's playing the cannon. Well, no, he's playing the green to get closer to the plant. Now, is it a two-ball plant or is he looking at a three-ball plant? 42. Two-ball plant. Got to be made. Can be. Yeah. We've got the red tied up the blue. 43. Just about OK. But red only just went in. And played that nicely, considering he was tight under the cushion. It was a blue into that pocket that Fuck cost it. him the last frame. That one could win him this. Forty-nine. That will do. Thank you. Daddy Quaits. <coughs> To one more red in the colour. Needed to leave Mark Selby needing the snookers. Fifty six. <laughs> so sixty two points the lead, fifty nine remaining. He's already made 63. one century, and if he clears that red away from the black, I can see the second century of this match now. Well, hush my mouth. Well, that was a little bit careless. And the frame. And Mark has conceded, so Ronnie will be relieved there because that frame could have gone on. But Mark concedes. Good break from Ronnie. 2 1 in front now. So we all know the importance of it. Two frame advantage to run it or all square. Although Mark Selby's obviously incredible at winning these frames, like the second frame, he'd also like, prefers to get in and win frames in one visit. He can score every bit as heavily as Ronnie O'Sullivan. So important for him to get a nice visit to the table soon in this match, round about the black. Yeah, it just shows you there, Mark's ice break, 24. To be honest, he's never really had a good chance in amongst the balls. 
had a chance, obviously, in the last frame, but the balls weren't good. And in the, the frame, he won the second frame. Couldn't muster up a big break. Sometimes the, if the balls run awkward. But sometimes you get the feeling with Ronnie, even though they're awkward, he can develop them into positions that other players can't. Thank you. So as we said a few frames ago, patience is a, a big thing now for Mark Selby. He's not got to panic. And that's careless from Ronnie. That red hit in the yellow was not intended. And here's a chance now for Mark. And the black's available into both corner pockets. So if he knocks this in, it's a decent chance. One. Slightly hampered by the yellow here. But he's got three reds to play forward to the left corner, so she should do this no problem. <coughs> it just creeps by the blue, but that's perfect. Five. So yeah, John, good chance now for Mark Selby to score some points. Well, considering he was stretching, he couldn't have played that better. He's got a nice angle on the black. Thirteen. immediately asking for the cue ball to be clean, so he wasn't happy with the contact. It was a bit of a bounce. And there looked to be one, just took the pace out of the cue ball. I don't think it's really affected his position that much, because there's those two loose reds on the left-hand side of the table that's available. But I suppose it just meant he had to do a little bit more with the cue ball, but he's played it well. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Going to him now, Stephen, you think? Yeah, it's not the easiest bunch to come out well because the three reds near close to the black are quite spaced apart. I was never guaranteed that one. He is unlucky not to be in anything, but... It wasn't the easiest bunch to go into. And the problem is you put backspin on the ball and you see the way it moves, but he's nudged the red and he's gone to the side cushion. Another day he could bounce off the cushion and have a red. And he show you there's not much on because he desperately had to look to see if this was a plant to the middle. I don't think it is. Mark Selby, 29. And that's the thing we always say, that when you go into the cluster, you always need an element of luck to be on the next red. And he didn't have any. And that's a little bit careless from Ronnie. He's left a chance of a red now to the right middle. And Mark may te be tempted to take it on because he feels the only red he could leave is the one he's playing, and that red should have been covered by the black. Yeah. So, just 
that was careless safety from Ronnie. Could hand this fourth frame to Mark Selby, and a big frame it is, particularly for Mark. Six. Yeah, I think Mark Seven. Selby himself would love to win this final. You're knocking in lots of big breaks, because I think it must annoy him, everyone just giving him credit for winning the scrappy frames all the time. He can score as heavy as anyone. Yes, up until the first frame when Ronnie made his 1-2-4, they both had seven century breaks in this tournament. Oh! oh. Well, would you believe it? Would you believe that? I did not see that one coming. This be the first turning point of this match. Another big thing when you get a match between two great players is winning the frames that you shouldn't, pinching the frames. Eight. That can be a big pointer in who wins this title. didn't eight. punish him and he'll be annoyed going back to his seat <coughs> Mr. Chance there yeah that was what? a that was a nervy one for me there from Ronnie very surprising didn't have to do anything with the cue ball he knows the importance of these pinching these frames Well, sure. Eight. Expect any mistakes now. 16. Two reds, two blacks, and he's passed the winning post in this frame. 17. And then going to the mid session in the full, all square. And yeah, I'd be very relieved after missing that blue. He must have thought. 24. Going back to his chair, I'm 3 1 down. Yeah, we were saying what a bonus it could be for Ronnie to pinch the frame, what a turning point it could be. It can work the other way now. 25. But from a neutral's point of view, going into the mid-session, into the all square, both players 32. have had the chances, they've settled in, they've got the pace of the table and with the ability 33. that the world champion world number one Mark Selby and the genius of Ronnie O'Sullivan we could be in for an absolute classic final this frame well and truly now beyond the reach of Ronnie all players 39. should have settled Forty. 
difficulty five. Forty-six. Forty-eight. Thank you. Forty-nine. Yeah, don't be concentrating on these, Mark. Just needs a bit more table time. He hasn't had as much table time as Ronnie at the moment. Fifty-three. Fifty-five. Fifty-eight. Control that nicely. Uh, as I say, I know the frame's over, but just... Let me get your hand on the table. Get the cue going through nicely. Get the 62. pace. It's all going to help in the long run as this match progresses. 67. 67. Well, the pink's not gone in, but that's more than enough, and that's by far his highest break in the match so far. He missed the blue in the middle, but. Ronnie O'Sullivan didn't take advantage, and that's why they're going into the mid-session interval. All square, two apiece. Boys, two frames apiece, four more to play. Change of commentary you, in the five. box now, Ronnie as we Sullivan. say hello to Ken Doherty and Dennis Taylor. Thank you very much, Hazel. Very entertaining first four frames. Ronnie could quite easily have been 3-1 up. And it's, <laughs> had he caught it? That is the question. He's still pretty sharp. Thank you. <laughs> Can't wait to see what's going to happen <laughs> next because, uh, yeah, that was a very easy red he missed in the early part of that last frame, Ken. It was. He'll be disappointed. But four more frames to play. Both players will be looking for some sort of lead going into this evening's session. Of course, to tend to lift a wonderful trophy and, of course, the title of UK champion. It's a fascinating match so far, Dennis. Oh, that was a nice little kiss. It looked like he, he goes back to his seat with a <laughs> smile on his face because Quiet as we down, show please. you from this angle, he was going to come out, kiss the red and leave something on. Perfectly safe. Just as you see there, one hour and seven minutes. Certainly hasn't been slow. Just the second frame lasted 33 minutes. It's come up short, but that was a good shot to bring the black into play there. Neither of these players will want the high-valued colours tied up. Picked one up nicely there, but uh, not on a colour. It was a sort of shot to nothing he attempted there. Mark Selby won. The fact he's finished so close to the green as we show you it again, it looked. Yeah. It means
means that Ronnie couldn't come off a side cushion. So he's got to come off a couple of cushions to nestle into the bunch or land on that red behind the black spot. He'd like to just land in the bunch. Ah, oh, and a miss. Box will be six. A few reds moved by then. Towards. There's Brendan Moore there, one of the top referees on the score board this afternoon, just helping out with the aid of that okay. monitor. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really make much of a difference. It's just got to try and avoid that pink on the way. Mark, thank you. There's no reds on. In, in the pack itself, but he's got to be careful he doesn't slide by the pack because the two reds above the black are on, so this looks a bit square. This is definitely pink again. Foul oh, and a miss. And he's coming off Mark the 76. second cushion, needs to really get closer towards the left center pocket with the cue ball. Okay. Somewhere near to that line would get him into the reds. So the pink again. Mm. Hard on the miss. Oh, wow. Mark Selby six. Oh, this could be more costly. This won't certainly be going back. I think that red at the bottom of the pack pots. Does it? I think he's got enough of it. And if not, he can flick a bit of side on. Oh. Well. Again, please. I'm sure that. Is that red in the pot? Wow. Maybe it doesn't, obviously. Yeah, Ronnie, Mark. Yeah, now, a bit closer towards the middle pocket with the cue ball. Let's see if we can get a bit closer this time. Well, this looks better. Yeah, a lot better. Could be a possible 11 frames to play this evening, depending on how the score is. Oh, that's a mistake. Is he going to get away with this? I don't think so. So the first real chance in this frame now falls to the world champion. And what a chance this is. Absorb the One. and free up the black spot there while potting that red. Now, uh, well, the black spot, he's hoping that it will because he doesn't want it going up onto the green spot. Just about eight, and I think it's potable as well into the bottom right hand corner pocket. Nine. Oh, 
play the little cannon on the bottom of that pack to hold for the second red. 16. Closest to the black, into the same corner pocket. Didn't judge it correctly and may have a red. He's having a look at the red right in the middle of the bunch. There's also a plant and this is fortunate. He's got a bit of a break 17. there. Because he would have been on nothing there, Dennis. Slice look. Yeah, I think Mark thought himself when he got the cannon in the way he did, he thought he was going to be out of position. 24. Yeah, this was the one he was just playing, more of a full ball cannon, but glanced off it. Mark's highest break was made in the frame before 32. the mid-session interval, break of 67, very timely indeed. Thirty-three. They've both made seven centuries in this year's Petway UK Championship, so they were the two form players. Forty. Forty one. Screw back for the choice of two reds into the left centre from the black here. Do you know you had a perfect picture of him playing reverse side there, hitting the white on the left to send the white off to the right. That was a lovely angle we had to show you that there. 49. Hasn't played that too well. It would be a bit straighter on. This black. Just control that very nicely indeed and back into perfect position now. 56. Fifty-seven. That red means that Ronnie now needs a snooker. Plus all those valuable points, Dennis, uh, from Fells at the beginning of this frame has made a difference now. points in the lead but there's still 63. 75 left on the table and oh, well, I don't think Ronnie will Off come back to the table will he well he may do but it's a very tall order well no in <laughs> fact he, he came back and had a look but decided uh, okay, Mark Selby. there was very little chance so he just put his cue on the table and Mark Selby gets himself into the lead for the first time it's 3-2 to the world champion and it was significant, that I suspect, that uh, Mark was in here having a little uh, a little knock around on the tables here just to get get himself sorted, just to get himself keep him warm up during the interval there. And clearly he's come out firing. Yeah, Ronnie didn't. I yeah. thought he might do. Um, and also, and I know he, he was 82 points behind, but there's six reds left. Um, I think that was the case anyway. Uh, you're not that far adrift. I, I know he looked at the table, perhaps if he could have got straight on the black first red, but... I think Mark Selby would have just gone to the table and seen what had happened. You know, there's no rush about the game. You don't have to keep on getting frame after frame. So, marginal bit of impatience, perhaps. Yeah, how do you read that, John? Well, of the 80, there was 18 points there in fouls, wasn't there? So that's why there was plenty of balls still left on the table, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it would have been the other way around. Mark would have played on it. He, he had luck, didn't fancy it, and off he went. So I don't, I don't blame him. It's no. just all down to the player. You know, 
you would have carried on, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, but the thing with Ronnie wouldn't want to sort of stop his flow. He wants to get on with it. Uh, I think Stephen Hendry would have gone, yeah, it's too much bother. But you would have carried on, wouldn't you? <laughs> I yeah. think we've established that. <laughs> well, the thing is, the, the thing is, right? When you when you need two snookers, when 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 you when you when that, that happens, when you need three snookers, when you're 49 behind with one red left, every now and again, you get the situation that happens, a freak situation sometimes, where you can win that frame. Might be one in a thousand, but you never know. That can make the difference. Would you say yes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we thought so. All right. And um, it, it, it is. Possibly that incident does um, indicate the contrast in styles, the contrast in the way these guys like to play the mm. game, clearly. Um, Ronnie likes to get on with things. He's not an impatient person, it would appear, most of the time, but mm. he likes that flow to, to keep it going. Yeah, because he keeps his cue action going and he keeps his brain thinking about the game all the time and everything wants to... But listen, you know, the last two frames there, Mark Selby, we were saying, we are talking about him tactically, you know, we're doing him a disservice. He's a scorer as well. Last two scoring opportunities there, 67, 63. You know, he can score when he's in amongst the balls as well. He's not world number one. I, I mean, how many weeks has it been? You said the other oh, it's day. A, it's about 22 months. It's yeah. absolutely yeah. incredible that he's been that long at the top of the game as number one. So you've got to have, an, you've got to have a great all-round game to is be there. The, is the, the guy that who has dominated the ranking since they moved to this rolling ranking system, no one has stayed at the top longer than he has. And again, it's a testament to his longevity and the consistency of what he's doing. And actually, just to underline your point about the heavy scoring, to the start of this match, Thank both guys had made seven centuries. Well, so there's no difference between the two of them. Obviously, Ronnie's come out and made uh, century number eight in the opening frame. So they've both been a good stroke in that respect. Back we go then. Yeah, interesting thoughts from Hazel and the two lads in the studio. And I suppose, yeah, doesn't you think like okay, Ronnie's the bigger scorer of the two, but you know they both made Ronnie's made eight centuries, Mark Selby's made seven centuries. He does score when he does get his chance. He's made 445 career centuries, Mark Selby. Well, the reason is world number one and current world champion is because of his all-round game. There's no weaknesses there in Mark Selby's game. Yes, yeah, 22 months at the top of the leaderboard. World number one, it's an incredible achievement, isn't it, Dennis? In the modern game, it certainly is. I mean, for Stephen Hendry to dominate the 90s, it was quite incredible. And for Steve Davis to dominate the 80s, was also quite incredible. There's nobody really. We thought Ronnie might take over and dominate the game, but it's too difficult nowadays. There's too many top players there for some one player to dominate, but Mark Selby's doing his best, that's for sure. Miss. Always get a big Sullivan. ooh from the crowd when you miss a ball. But listen, it might be a free ball. And that could be important. Not no free ball, but it must have been close. Nice to see Olivia Martel refereeing a final here. From Belgium, one of the top referees in the game. He's also a nurse. This is such a thin snick that he's after here. He can't change his mind, of course. To the right. Yeah, I don't think he could get to the one on the right. So, as I say, he doesn't have to play the same shot again. This is where it was. Now, where is it now? Let's have a look. Just a little bit nearer the cushion, which is. Can you shake this? Slight disadvantage. Towards the cushion? To mark, no, it's away from the cushion. Brandon Moore will just confirm that. Yep. He might try the same shot one more time. Thank you. He doesn't want the white to wobble in the jaws of the pocket. That's pretty, well, still a wee bit closer to the cushion, which makes it slightly more difficult, but... Oh, now then. If he can see 
All right, look where it's finished. Final and a miss. <laughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan for free ball. He's going to put them back in from there, which is, uh, yeah. For the, the three miss rule to apply, if you can see a, the ball, a ball, full ball on, then you can have as many goals as he wants. And I think he, he couldn't see a full ball. Yeah, if he could have seen a full ball, the referee would have certainly warned him. But I'm not so sure Ronnie did, made the right decision there. I think he should have put him back in his original position because this is so much easier to hit. Oh, and a miss. <laughs> say that. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to call the miss there because it's easier to hit another red. I know sometimes it's uh, it's a bit cruel the miss rule, but how close do you have to get? But it was easier escape route, so it always will be called. But Dennis, why put him back in that position where he was originally? It was a much tougher escape. This is a lot easier. Just nestle off the. Side and top cushion in behind this red. His first shot was so much more difficult to get it safe. I think Ronnie's hoping that uh, Mark will just slip past this red and maybe leave the one on that's near the black spot. But uh, knowing Mark Selby, you can't see that happening. Now will he land on it this time? Don't call him. See a little more tactical play in this frame because the black has now gone awkward. Ronnie playing a much more aggressive safety shot there. Well, he has knocked the red close to the spot in left-hand corner pocket. That's always the, the danger when you play that type of shot. It doesn't have too much to do with the cue ball here. The pink goes into the right center. It's a tough pot. right across that because he was hoping as Ken said to stop the white where the red was to leave the pink and finished up uh, when well, he hit it way too far to the right but this is not a an easy starter here mm, wobbled a bit but well. safely in now it's a chance even with the black tied up let me show you it again just wobbled a few times I think the pink's going to be okay looking at the spot there. The pink's still going to be available when it goes back onto its spot. You can play for the blue this time, but uh, let's see if the pink's still, yeah, available into Seven. the right corner and also left middle. Mm, a couple of loose reds he can go on here after the blue, but now and Ronnie will be considering trying to get that black back on its spot as soon as possible. <coughs> and there is a bit of room 
between Black 30. and Cushion should be able to get the cue ball in behind it at some stage. Certainly not off this shot, but he'll have to try and win the frame from this visit. He'll have to get that black on its spot if you can. One thing I have noticed about Ronnie in uh, these opening frames of the final, he's been walking around and pointing the cue, and you know, usually he just falls into position, shot, and he's missed that. So he's not Ronnie O'Sullivan, fully focused, I don't think. He's missed a few. Pots that he normally wouldn't, and against an opponent like Mark Selby, that would be playing on his mind. You don't usually see Ronnie shake his head a little bit like that. He's left this red now. Can he screw the cue ball in between the black and the right hand side cushion? As I said earlier, there's a bit of room there. He's got a nice angle on this red. It's a lovely camera angle there. Just wanted to be a bit straighter on this black. <laughs> Mark Selby won. Well, it wasn't all that Thank easy. You. When you're close to the black like that, it's it's quite difficult to just pick the angle out. Just getting a little bit nervy out there. Two of the greatest players in the game and White's being cleaned. I don't know if he got a heavy contact there. Let's have a look, see if the red jumps. Didn't seem to. Oh, just came across it, didn't he? Wasn't very, very difficult red, but you'd expect it. You'd have expected Ronnie to get that. Just with his cue action, or with his gesture, it looked like he came right across it. to be able to get on that red that's just to the right of the black. He's having a look at the area there. The little triangle of reds seem to be covering each other. I'm not sure if the one to the right and to the back is available. Find out shortly. Good shape here. If 
he can roll this in, he's nicely on the black, and then he can play for the red that's next to the black. Thank you. 13. I think that red will go in the same pocket as the black here. He can play a nice little stun shot to get onto that red. Oh, it doesn't. So he can't play that shot. And that was the only one available to him, and he's done well. 20. Twenty-one. He's not completely sure where he can put the black, avoid the red on the top cushion and get back out for the red to the right of the black. Looks like the cue ball may be going into that red on the top cushion and that's just what he's trying to work out. That must be very tight, the one he's looking at, the red I mentioned previously, at the back and to the right of the little triangle. He's had a look to see if it would go to the right middle pocket. Maybe he feels it does. I'm just wondering, if it, was he having a look at the two ball plant into the right centre, Dennis? 28. Well, we find out what's available very shortly. The plant would be better because he can and it's the red, the plant's going to the left of the pocket, as you can see. Got to be right in the pocket be 28. at that sort of pace on these middle pockets. Stop calling out, please, when the player is at the table. Thank you. I remember a few years back, uh, I did a survey and asked people what sort of frames did they enjoy watching the most. And it was amazing the percentage that enjoyed watching the tactical player like this. They love to see the big breaks, but they also enjoy this type of frame. What a great effort that was. Yeah, it was. Very well worked out. He played it almost like a shot to nothing. He knew there was no reds available to the right centre. He was blocking the red right of the black into the right corner. And the only red he could leave was the one he was going for. He hasn't left that. It was very well worked out. Uh, that makes a bit of a difference with that uh, red going near the left middle pocket. I mean, 
there is one that's closer to the pink spot that will go into the middle, but very, very risky. And the white's going way up the table, but with Ronnie doubling that red near the middle, it now means that the safety area has got to be very precise, otherwise you could leave that. I don't know if he's got one eye on the pot up into the corner here. And he did have. Now, where's this red going to finish? It will go this red, but it's a, a tough one. No, no worries. The red's going to finish this time. <laughs> OK. Although, having said that, I think this one cuts back into the right corner. Mark Selby, one. Mark Selby certainly testing Ronnie's patience here at the moment. He's pushed the boat out a couple of times. He's starting to look a little bit impatient. I mean, he's an excellent safety player himself, but he's left this red again. having a look to see if he pots this red can he cannon the cue ball into the pink and hold the cue ball doesn't look he's playing that shot now Mark Selby one. Wow, nearly uh, missed the cushion there with his hand. Have a look there, just uh, wow, <laughs> don't say that very often. <laughs> just stopped him in his tracks. <coughs> I've only had the one long tactical frame. Second frame over 33 minutes. It was Mark Selby that won that. Those are the type of frames. If you can win the tactical ones that don't have prove important, all frames are important, but if you can win the, the scrappy ones when the balls go a little awkward, you can see Mark Selby ahead in the safety success department. But He doesn't mind uh, having a tactic game. Ronnie can mix it with the best in the safety department, as good as any safety player we've ever had, but he prefers to get on with it. <coughs> I 
there's an indication of how good a safety player Ronnie is. Yeah, you would fail if Ronnie does go on to win this championship. He, he's got to win his fair share of these type of frames. He's got to be as competent as Mark Selby in that department. And you would feel that Mark Selby would have the edge in this type of frame, but Ronnie has to be just as patient at times. Brown slightly out of commission there. So not a great deal to play in behind now. That's near the pocket, as you can see. We are right down the line of it. That's straight in the pocket. Oh. Ronnie O'Sullivan four. Just looking to see if he could possibly take that pot on, but uh, not from there, you wouldn't think. He, he would have to find the gap if he takes this cut on. He'd have to come between the black and reds. I think he, he could do. He's had to think about that. But uh, he's certainly not rushing things here. He wants to make the correct choice. And it's usually the first shot that you see is the correct shot. Black, this is a big shot. Oh, what a shot this is. <laughs> oh, dear me. If it keeps running, that's one of the best positional shots in this year's <laughs> championship. He's a couple of inches uh, away from being perfect there. Very unlucky. Pot was tough enough, but to get the cue ball anywhere near there was... Have a look at the cue ball here, Dennis. Well, without a doubt for me, that, that was one of the best positional shots, but he's just come up a fraction short, but what an effort. He can still cut it in, but it's very thin. He deserves that. Six. And he deserves to be on the black because that last positional shot was uh, outstanding. Beautiful cannon he played on that red, wasn't it? Just below it, just to hold the cue ball for the black. Oh, would you believe it? Mark Selby, six. 
Would you believe it? You don't expect these players to uh, suffer from pressure. They've been there so many times, but it shows you even the best can twitch. Green ball. Yeah, taking the green away from the cushion, trying to get that cue ball behind yellow and brown. Ronnie O'Sullivan, one. Well, it's not too bad. Take that. Puts a bit of pressure on this safety shot now. Well, he's looking at an absolutely peach of a. If he can pull this off, he's going to hit the cushion first, then hit the red thin send the white all the way around the angles and this is the sort of shot he's so good at just just watch this safety a shot a shot that he's attempting here have a look at that i mean that is just <coughs> terrific well i'm lucky to hit the blue it's still a good shot but he was heading towards the cushion and over behind the yellow Another frame that's just gone over the 30 minutes, but it's been uh, fascinating to watch. Some great tactical play. Didn't expect the kiss on the black, and because of it, he's left this red into the left corner. Needs a kiss on the brown, and hasn't got it, but no One. prizes for guessing what's going to happen next. What's going to happen next, Ken? It's going to be tucked up behind the brown. Mark Selby one. Could have played that better. Should have really got... She's trying to keep the yellow in play, but should have really got tighter to the brown there. Didn't want to leave this easy escape for Ronnie off two cushions. that red will pass the black well maybe there's just enough room because with the uh, blue and pink safe might be tempted here can I wait for a better chance Catching the brown, so bit of a chance for Ronnie to play the snooker. If he can swing this around the angles, he could get in behind the green. He's thinking about uh, another option, but that seems a natural shot to play. If 
he's, he's, he's thinking about <laughs> pushing the red up to try and free the pink and blue. That's a bit risky. Yeah, it's just in situations like these, it's the important thing is obviously to keep the red safe. There's a big target up behind the green and yellow, you would say, but if he plays that shot, he'd be chipping the red towards this right-hand corner pocket, so... The only other thing I can think about, it, he was debating whether to double the red onto the pink and blue, but that is very risky. And in the end, he's just played a, well, a safety shot that could put himself in a spot of bother here. So good at that shot where he swings the cue ball around the table. He doesn't want this man to open up a two-frame advantage, that's for sure. gets down to these type of frames. Ronnie O'Sullivan is playing probably the best in the business at winning. <coughs> frames like this. So clever, Mark Salvi's safety. It's always spot on. The red is so close to this top cushion, he might be able to play it with a lot of top spin. I've never seen Ronnie take so long over the last three shots. It's normally 14, 15 seconds, but he's really putting a lot of effort into this. He knows how important this frame is. And that's an excellent shot. He may get the cover on the brown here. No <coughs> played. Can he knock this red safe, hitting the cushion first? Oh, we can see the red, he's okay. Just enough sticking out. Don't think he's covered it, but <laughs> what a shot. It's absolutely dead straight, the red. I mean, this would require perfect queuing. Cam was perfect queuing. Couldn't have hit much better, could he? Excellent pot. Still not ideal, though. Could take yellow or green here. He's just checking the scores. He's six behind, so he's still going to need right up to the blue and pink. And as you can see, they're in a very safe position at the moment. Just wondering if he's working out. If I take a difficult yellow on and leave it, he's, he's still okay. He's six behind, so Mark would need the difficult blue. And so he's just. Yeah, the green is pretty difficult. You'd have to go down this table to get the cue ball back up towards the yellow. We could take the yellow one into the top left-hand corner pocket. The yellow would go back on its spot if it went in. He's contemplating the bringing the pink into play. What's he going to do? He's just <laughs> a little bit confused at the moment. He just can't work a shot out and usually he's so good we say he's got one of the quickest brains in the game of snooker but he can't work out the best option here
I would have thought yellow up into the corner, the yellow comes back on its spot. I mean, he, you know, I would fancy him to knock the yellow in, but if, he, if he's taken this much time, I, I wouldn't fancy it. So Bing ball. It is the pink into play. He'd worked out that Mark was going to need the difficult blue. Are you set up in one? So he's left a tempter here for Mark Selby. play in the end that was a cracking yellow but uh, he's got an awful long way to travel with the uh, cue ball to get back around the table and onto the brown has to avoid the black and he's missed the black but he's got a chance to bring the blue out the blue that he needs so one good shot here and he could take the frame can he pot the brown, but more importantly, can he knock the blue into play? He's got a perfect angle, as you said, off the ball cushion, right into the blue. Does he get it hard enough? Oh, Nine. oh, oh. great effort. Now, will that shot that Ronnie played, bringing that pink into play? the difference in this frame if he gets a chance. Great effort, wasn't it? Just another bit here. That was perfect. Mark Selby, nine. So effectively, you would have to say it's a blue ball game here. He's got a nice chance if he knocks the blue up towards the green pocket then it leaves the cue ball where the blue is possibly get a snooker Clever shot. Fabulous shot there. He thought long and hard about it, and he's pulled off a little gem of a snooker there. Even with all the skill that Mark Selby has, and he's brilliant at getting out of snookers and knocking the other ball safe, there's still a little bit of luck involved. You're never sure where they're going to go. Thank you. Settle down, please. Well, that clever little shot from Ronnie has given him a chance now. Could put the blue into the green pocket or take it into the right center. The easier shot is into the right centre, but a lot more difficult to control the cue ball. If he puts it into the green, the cue ball is going towards the pink. Well, he lost the. Uh Long tactical second frame, and well, just the pace kept that out. Is he going to lose this long tactical frame? This pot to decide that. Five. It's 
taken a lot out of Ronnie this frame, I think. Mark Selby will be uh, feeling pretty pleased with himself. Mark Selby, five. Well, he's coming back to the table, but he's going to need two snookers. The difference, 20 points, of course. Only 13 remaining on the table, so particularly where the black is, very difficult to get. Snooker's behind the black. Interesting that he even come back to the table here. Well, the cue ball's gone in. Yeah. Ronnie has they stayed in his chair. He's Selby. conceded the frame. Both players go out. So a very long tactical frame. Almost 45 minutes. And it goes to the world number one. Mark Selby, he now needs Ronnie O'Sullivan by four frames to two. And when you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> 45 minutes for that frame, but uh, very much worth it from Mark Selby. Now, we saw Ronnie fashion that great snooker behind the pink. He carved out the opportunity and then missed the blue. Suddenly, it's it's a real body blow for Ronnie the last couple of frames, John. Yeah, that was a massive. There's been a, in the tale of two blues, really, because early on in the second frame, when he was flowing well, missed one in the middle pocket, missed it into the you know same hole there as well with that one. And that, that's, that's a real sore one, that one. is because it looked like for all the world he's going to nick the frame. And he's just spent over half an hour of his concentration of his time there. And both frames have gone over half an hour. He's lost them. It's uh, interesting to see so many errors from the two of them. This is not the free-flowing snooker that we possibly could have imagined, but no less exciting and tense because of that, Steve. Yeah, and I, I suppose if you were trying to judge you know, how, how you become the ultimate match player, it's how you deal with those errors. And there is the possibility that... Uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan is more fragile than, than Mark Selby when it comes to that area. So Ronnie makes a really good uh, start in the first frame, then misses that blue, and it seems to be more of a shock to Ronnie's system than the blue that Mark Selby missed a little bit later. So how you sort of deal with that, you know, how can you put it behind you and get on with it, is uh, down, to the down into the equation. Um, and even that blue he had at the end, it, it seemed like it was a little bit of indecision how he was going to play it, whereas Ronnie O'Sullivan perhaps in completely full, full flow just whacks it in the corner or gets down first time and cuts the blue in. Um, so whether he's, you know, I don't know, say lacking in confidence is not the right back, but just double thinking himself a bit. And even, John, that, that decision he had to make with the, 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 the colours on the yellow, it yeah. was you know, a little bit longer than yeah, to think it out. Than, yeah. 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 And funny enough, we were talking about that whilst watching it, about the conversations that you have with yourself as snooker players out there. You could literally mm -hmm. almost tune in to what he was telling himself. Yeah, and, and you, can, you can, as you say, the, the expression is second-guess yourself. You, you, sometimes you make a decision to think, oh, that's the right one. And then all of a sudden you see something else and then you see another problem. And you, you know, you, you can forget to play the game and what's in front of you. You just get yourself bogged down mentally. All right. Well, Mark Selby's still out and uh, Ronnie's come back into the arena. We're talking about um, the little conversations you have with yourself as a professional snooker player. Uh, you must spend quite a great deal of time in conversations with your that little head, that little voice inside your head at times, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's nice to have a friend in, in the in your dressing room who knows the game a bit. Thank sometimes you, something seven. just to sort of uh, pour Ronnie your heart out to. Uh, but you. You actually sort of succeed or fail as a snooker player on the amount of successful decisions you make. Uh, but there's that grey area as well, of course. OK, back we go. And suddenly, Mark Selby, the world number one, has established a two-frame lead. He's got the gap. And he's got a chance of knocking this long red in. It wasn't the best break-off shot from Ronnie. Now, where's the red going to finish? This will cut to the middle, but uh, I'll just show you just over. Cut that. Just uh, he's usually so good at that type of shot, but Ronnie's got this uh, red he can cut in, but it's the uh, cue ball. I don't know whether it's going to go up through that gap between the reds and back down again. In fact, he's playing with a lot of bottom. Which tells you he was taking it to the corner with a bit of safety in mind. Needs to pull up. Needs to pull up. 
and it hasn't. So how much is that last frame taken out of Ronnie O'Sullivan? Seven. Needs to get that red that's closest to this bottom left-hand corner pocket out of the way as soon as possible because that will free up the black into that left corner pocket. Taking his time, Mark Selby here. He knows the importance of this frame because he'd be guaranteed a lead going into this evening's session. Ronnie on the rack slightly, you'd have to say. Ronnie looking a little bit fragile at the moment. Twelve. Thirteen. It's not a good shot. Too straight on the blue. Might just be able to get 18. to the one that's behind the pack and play that in such a way. Well, in fact, the one to the left of the bunch goes. That one there. And he hits that so well, that type of shot. 19. See the white stopping and then picks up pace with the backspin on it. There's always a few turning points, even in the best of uh, 19, but I think that frame before the mid-session interval, only missed an easy red in the right centre, otherwise he could quite comfortably have been 3-1 ahead, but that's all history. But you do pick certain little shots out, turn matches. And as you said, Ken, if he can get one of the last two, he'll be quite happy, he'll be hoping to win both. Possible 11 frames to be played this evening. his target 68 before his opponent will need a snooker pink goes into the right center here you can just pot this red and get on the pink nicely 30 
36. Thank you. 37. And this is one of Mark's great strengths also. He had that long tactical frame that lasted nearly 45 minutes, but when he gets a chance, he's back into stroke again. Even with all the tactical play, as soon as he gets a chance, he's back queuing beautifully. 44. Fifty one. It's certainly going to be a much quicker frame than the previous one. those pictures where you're right down the player's queue. It really is 57. terrific, man. It's as if you're playing the shot yourself. 58. Not many pots away, can from opening up a three-frame advantage. Yeah, just let that one slip slightly. What did he? A bit straighter on this pink, just drop it in and get down to a couple of reds around the black spot. But may have to take this cue ball in and out of bulk. Just had a look at the the red beside the black. Was it possible plant on into this bottom left hand corner pocket? But doesn't look like it. Wow, wow. What's he left? What's he left? Well, he certainly left a couple of reds, one to the right centre. Now, this is Ronnie's chance here. Difficult, you would say, to win the frame from this one. Certainly didn't expect this chance so soon. He didn't get the uh, action on that that he wanted, and what a shot he's taking on here. The percentages were against that. Where is the pink going to finish up? <laughs> well, he can. Well, can he see a red descended onto the pink? <laughs> I mean, this is finished. He might be able to play a cannon off the red that's just to the left of the black there. If he can't see any of the others, he'd have to play a billiard shot here. He was a great pool player. What's his billiards like? Here he goes. Watch this shot. Trying to cannon off that red, hit the pink, knock the red in. Pretty good. Sort of shot you don't see that often, but he judged the cannon perfectly. Seven. Eight. Class act, Mark Selby. He really is. Forty-eight. 
faulty. I've seen him at breakfast with his uh, lovely wife, Vicky, and their beautiful two-year-old daughter, uh, 20. Sophie Marie. They were totally relaxed at breakfast with a high chair there. 21. So life's great for the world number one and current world champion at the moment. <laughs> and there's Vicky there. Terrific girl. 24. Great pool player as well. Used to be. I don't think she'll 26. have time to play a pool now. 29. But she'll be very pleased what she's watching here. Thirty three, thirty eight, forty four. Well, he had an earlier break at fifty eight. But then he must have picked off the spot, trying to go all the way around the table, but Ronnie couldn't take advantage, and Mark Selby opens up a three-frame advantage. He now leads Ronnie O'Sullivan by five frames to two. Mm. Well, he did have a glimmer of hope there, did Ronnie, because uh, Mark on 58 missed a pink off the spot and didn't get away with it. But Ronnie was faced with the red over the middle pocket can, wasn't he? Yeah, I'm just a bit surprised that he played this red, Dennis. I mean, he could have played the other red, which is a little bit easier, the one down to the bottom right-hand corner pocket and brought the cue ball back up towards the ball colours because he's, tr he's trying to dig into this uh, cue ball and uh, trying to miss the red on the way down. Doesn't do that. And, of course, he was faced then with the... Had to go for the pink, of course, with the red over the hole, but may have just missed the trick there after getting in. Yeah, a bit unlucky to, you know, for the red to cover the black. He couldn't take the black on. But then Mark Selby spotted this straight away. And, you know, he, he's a great pool player. He's probably a decent billiard player as well, but he's judged this to perfection. To play the cannon, it's not a natural. He has to play it with a lot of stun, and he judged it to perfection. And as soon as he hit the pink, he knew the frame was his. So a big frame coming up. Yeah, this is massive frame, uh, particularly for Ronnie and his fans. Even if he gets out 5-3 behind, it's still a long way to go tonight, of course. But 6-2, it's a big deficit you, to overcome. Seats, Some massive frame Thanks, coming up the last... The final frame of this, this session, first session, Mark Selby to break. He's lost four in a row, so... Confidence will be a little bit low. Needs something like a long pot just to get him going again. Yeah, he's out of sorts at the moment. Missed that by quite a long way. I've had some terrific battles, these two players. In fact, it's Ronnie that's won the Six. two meetings in the UK Championship. But uh, it's Mark Selby that's won the two meetings Seven. they had in the World Championship in that final a couple of years ago when he won 18-14 after being well behind.
14. Fifteen. That's not as he played it. Twenty-two. Just wanted to hit that red fuller. Twenty-three. We've got a nice angle on the brown here. Two choices: go into the pack or try and play on the the one at the bottom of the pack that's potable. Decides to go into them. Now how's his look? Is this red going to cover the pocket? 27. Split them nicely, but I think the red may have covered the pocket. The one that's close to the left-hand corner pocket. As we see, the brown again. He's got the possible red to right centre as well. The fact that he's bridging over another red just makes it a lot more difficult. This is missable. That's superb. 28. That is so difficult, bridging over a ball like that and getting a little bit of screw onto it was so difficult. 34. Great chance. The man from Leicester here. Well, he jumped up, he thought he missed that there, and just only the pace of the the ball going sliding in after two jaws of the corner pocket. Well, you feel one good positional shot here. Slipped away. Forty. And he was only just one one decent positional shot there, Dennison. Just that little clip on the red. Just have a look at where the cue ball finishes. Yeah, he didn't intend to cannon into that. He just was playing for this. He was bound to be on this one. And that could be end of break. Maybe Ronnie will get another chance in this frame. Very risky to try and play this. The balls are very close together, but the cue ball would be careering into the reds, you would feel. Being so close, it could possibly push it as well. But oh, Here we go. Oh, he played it well. Now what? The cue ball. Ooh. Thank you. 41. It's a terrific cutback. As we show you again, from that angle, it showed you how thin it was, but he nearly went in off the yellow, as you can see there. It's the end of break.
Mark Selby, 41. That was an excellent shot from Mario Sullivan. And he's got the snooker as well, I think. What a shot he played there. Might be the two cushion escape. Try and come off the one that's just to the left of the pink as we look at it. He's so good at this type of shot, but it's difficult. He is amazing at that sort of shot. He really is. First time we've seen that escape shot was uh, when Cliff Thorburn came on the scene back in 1972, Ken. It was very rarely played before that. Got up very quickly there. He hit it thicker than he intended, but I think the green's coming to the rescue. Man's going to take a bit of stopping this evening. Starting to knock that type of pot in. For all the odds, it looks as if he's going to lead by 6-2. It's amazing. Uh, Ronnie's down at 83% with his pot success rate. And, and Mark's not in the 90s just yet, but if he carries on potting those, he'll soon be there. Seven. And it's some performance uh, when you think about Eight. it, Ken. Uh, Ronnie making 124 in the opening frame, but he's going to win five in a row by the looks of things here. A lot for Ronnie to think about. Yeah, certainly is. He's going to need something special tonight to overturn. 6 2 lead, which looks ever more likely at the moment. 16. Mind that break and the interval can change things around. We know that Ron is quite capable of coming out and winning three or four frames in no time at all. But he's certainly being asked a big question. So 62 ahead just needs this. To leave Ronnie needing snookers. Frying ball. 
when it's there. Thank you too. And this has been a fantastic performance from Mark Selby. Ronnie came out for him at the beginning of this session. But those couple of frames, and you pointed out a couple of possible tournament points, and go back to that six frame as well, Dennis. Where Ronnie missed the blue into the centre pocket, with just blue, pink, and black Thank remaining. You. Particularly the, the time of the of the frame, like almost 45 minutes. That, such a big frame for Ronnie to win there. 37. That's the blue, and it's been all Mark Selby. But there's still a long way to go in this final, and I'm sure Ronnie's going to need a fast start tonight, though. That's for sure. 45. 46. Yeah, I've mentioned a couple of times the uh, frame before the mid-session interval. He missed a sit of a red in the middle pocket and uh, every chance of leaving 3-1 and he could have built on that, but uh, that seemed to be quite a turning point. Thank you. Sixty two. Sixty five. Right, doesn't look like missing. He, he wants to pop the lot here, doesn't he, Ken? Yeah, he's cute. So nicely just stroking him in. Sixty nine. Fantastic performance from the world number one. 74. 80. Yeah, there goes the play. Fantastic. 87 from Mark Selby. Ronnie Sullivan shakes his hand. He's got a lot of. Thinking to do for tonight. It's set up nicely for Mark Selby at the moment. He leads Ronnie O'Sullivan by six frames to two. To carve himself another slice of snooker history as only the sixth player ever to win the world and UK titles in the same calendar year. It's not been done since Ronnie himself achieved it 15 years ago. But will a supercharged O'Sullivan comeback materialize tonight? Let's find out with Ken Doherty and John Berger. Evening, fellas. Evening, Angel. And Thank you, frame nine. The atmosphere Ronnie to break. is electric. And it's Ronnie who gets this final session underway. And you just feel, Ken, <laughs> got to win three of the first four, you would have thought. Yes, absolutely. What a welcome bow player's got coming down those stairs. Music, absolutely fantastic. It's what you live for. Pick up a cue for nights like this. Ronnie needs a, a really fast start tonight. There's no doubt about that. Three of the first four wouldn't be too bad. Steve Davis said it there at the intro. I mean, if anybody can reel off four frames very, very quickly, it's certainly this man. Yeah, that's very true. It's just these tactical exchanges which have been long drawn out affairs in a few of the the frames. It's got to be uh, get one chance and win the frame. Ronnie can't <coughs> afford any unforced errors. He started off so well with that 124 in the very first frame, but just in the middle of the for session today, just seemed to lose his focus slightly, taking a bit more time over some shots. Didn't play on his natural instinct. 
He certainly looks up for it tonight, John. Yeah, I'm sure he will be. Uh, this is a different Ronnie also. And as we look at the pot success, 83% for Ronnie. That obviously, is far too low to get anything out of this match if it continues that way. Yes, a few years ago when Ronnie got behind, you feared for him, but uh, I think he's a different animal now. But of course, he's playing one of the, well, the world champion, world number one, who's not going to give him anything. Yeah, and just having a quick look at the average shot time, Ronnie's usually anywhere between 15 and 18 seconds. 22 seconds, same as Mark Selby. That's unusual. The yeah, average frame time, almost 19 minutes. I saw him in the restaurant, Ronnie was there with a few friends, and Damien Harris was there as well. And, uh, he looked very relaxed, you know, in between the sessions, and he said he was really looking forward to getting back out there tonight. There's Damien was there, the audience tonight. Good friend of his, always had tournaments when Ronnie is playing. From Ronnie, this is a good shot, and if he's playing the cross double on this red, he's got to be very careful of the double kiss. All things considered, <coughs> played that well, but there's a red just about the pink spot area, just below it, that is possible to the left corner. So you can consider this at this level half a chance for Mark Selby. You think bound to be on the pink if it went in. One. Well, he's not on the pink, but he's the little glance on the green has covered the pink into the left centre. He's on the green and he's on the yellow. The red above the black, just slightly to the left, pots, and that may be his choice after this yellow. That looks pretty, pretty good. And he can roll this red through and have the black into the opposite corner. And already, from that one long pot, he picked out nicely. Great chance. Four. In this first frame, of the evening session. Eleven. Gets to sixty eight at this visit. Ronnie will need a snooker. Twelve. Sure. 
19. Just getting the cue ball clean, coming around just to see what sort of angle he wants from the black after this red. Not a bad safety shot, it happened from Ronnie. It's the only red he could play off, but of course you leave anything that's possible, and if your opponent knocks it in, you finish up in your seat. 20. Just sat there, nothing you can do. No matter how much ability you've got. Wonderful crowd in here tonight. And this Barbican has really caught on, Ken, hasn't it, for this Betway UK Championship? Yeah, absolutely, and even the city itself has embraced the UK Championship. There's no doubt about that. It's firmly established as its home now. Great city. There's a buzz about the city around this time as well, but very similar to Sheffield when the World Championship is on. It seems to the people really embrace it and come out in there. Really good crowds all week this week. Not just for the big matches, TV games. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. He's got to left himself a nice little angle when potting this next red. He'll just brush off the other red, maybe, and, and bring the two of those into portable positions. Just having a look, really. He doesn't have to, of course, but you can just play a little nudge off the one just to the left of it. Well, he nudged it, but... 42. Now, that's not potable, certainly, into this bottom left-hand corner pocket. Have a look at this. With a little fuller contact on that red. There's a red directly behind the black that is available to the right corner. And that's the one he's played for. Now the question is, can he pot this and control 47. the cue ball? He's looking for a thin cut into the left corner. This is not what he played for. He played for the one to the right corner. But maybe just bounced up a little bit too much. The red's potable, but can he avoid the kiss on the second red for position on the colour? Yeah, the problem is the playing that red below the black is that you're trusting a bit of luck here. Short time come up to almost a minute may get a double kiss on this red and he's trying to screw up for the black but this could go wrong he got the double kiss on Four the red eight. and that's worked out a tree Played to Cannon, the pink full ball. Just missed the Cannon. Still 55. looking for three more of these reds to clinch the frame. Kiss the pink full ball. It'd have been perfect on this red. Not now. A little bit of work to do with the cue ball. Thank you. In the heart of the pocket, but just 56. concentrating solely on potting the red. He hit one red on the top cushion, hit the red on the side cushion. He's not good on the colour. 56 points the lead, still 75 remaining. Yeah, he could pot the pink, but might be wiser to put a colour safe, particularly with a 56 point lead. Try and put the 
the brown onto the right hand side cushion cue ball in the middle of the ball cushion Mark Selby That's 56 good, good start from Mark Selby Just nestling into the left hand of these two reds near the top cushion. Played it nicely. Well, saying what Ronnie has to do, but of course, first of all, he's got to force Mark into an error to give him a chance. So far, Ronnie's not had anything to go at. Mark's keeping it very tight. Yeah, so he's got to put a Red safe here. Red tight to the left hand side cushion. It'll be another insurance for him. Cue ball back up the ball. Can <laughs> Keeping the pressure on Ronnie here. Problem is with this shot, if he catches this too thin, he could knock a red onto the left corner. That's why he purposely caught it a little bit thicker, hoping to use the yellow as a blocker, and if it bounces, it will be. Has it covered the path to this red, to the left of the pink? Just a fraction short, I think. Mark can pot this. Talk about fractions. We see this fantastic long pot from Mark Selby. Another roll of the ball from Ronnie Safety. White would have been up behind the yellow and he wouldn't have had a shot at that red, but out of frame, you would say, Mark Selby's mercy. Yes, yeah, just looking for this red. Three. That puts him 60 points Four. ahead, with just 59 remaining. Blue to come for Mark Selby. It's been the perfect start, the perfect frame. Left his opponent with not even a sniff of a chance. No. He's looked in complete control. Well, he's missed it. Mark Selby, no. Now, what does Ronnie do? Two snookers needed, but it's a chance where there appear to be no chance. One. So there you see it, 57 points behind. This is the miss. That was unexpected. No. Let me check the scoreboard. So when he pots the blue, it'd be 51 point, oh, the pink. Okay. The pink will play the count. He's just working out. You still need two snookers if he pots the pink. Now he's conceded. Ron, you're still up at nine. It was a tall ass, tall order, but uh, he thought he'd give it a go. I'm certain no matter what happens here, Ronnie will concede the frame. Two snookers. 
the perfect start for Mark Selby. He now stretches his lead. He's five in front, 7-2. Yeah, the world number one playing with such assurance and such confidence today and I think there was that long red to get in in the first place which really illustrated that John. Well this is a massive shot in the context of the match we know Ronnie's got to get off to a good start if he's going to have some bearing in this match and he's got this long red and it went straight into the middle of the pocket beautiful long pot he had another one a little bit later his long game has been excellent he's getting stronger in that department but that was a massive shot. Steve, we were talking earlier on before this session started about the anticipation of an onslaught from Ronnie. Uh, Mark Selby will have been anticipating that he'll have come out swinging tonight. Yeah, but I think he's so mentally strong, I don't think he's worried uh, about what Ronnie's going to throw at him. And I, I mean, I've got to say, it's not often I feel for Ronnie O'Sullivan, not, not because I did no disrespect to him at all, but it's just the fact he's such a great player and he's, he's won so much. But he's up against an animal at the moment on the table and uh, it's hard. We've all been there and been, t you know, effectively on t today he's been outclassed, I'm not saying on a weekly basis, mm. but it's tough for Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's, he's going to give it as best he can, but it's going to be so hard. It, there's, there's a calmness, John, there's an assurance. Do you think it's even more marked than it was even six months ago at, at the Crucible when he won a second world title? Could very well be. I just think, well, I'm looking at this now, it's granite snooker. It is absolutely granite. What's on there, he's getting. When Ronnie comes to the table, he's glued to the bottom cushion. There's always a problem. Every, every safety shot has got a high quality of having to come back into the frame. I've got something to do. It's, there's nothing ever simple. Where he puts the cue ball is there for a purpose. So it's, it's always on you. The pressure is always on every part of your game. Do you sense that Ronnie's confidence might be ebbing away a little here? Yeah, I think you know, it's, it's an uphill battle and um, you know, unfortunately from Ronnie's perspective, because he's such a great talent, Thank you for he, he hasn't had to be in this position Mark that Selby often in his career yeah. to have experience about fighting a rear guard action. Usually it's Ronnie at the table hustling and bustling. Selby, five frames in front now. Breaks off. Can Ronnie get through to the red on the right hand side of the table? I think maybe he can. <laughs> and I think uh, any sort of chance can, he's going to go for. Yeah, absolutely. He has to. He has to get something going. feel better right into the heart of the pocket he's gonna need a, another good one here with the rest I try and he could take the blue here green around three cushions maybe for the red either above the black or below it no takes the blue same shot he's got to get over on the right hand side of the table here yeah, the blue's a little bit more difficult than the green. But right in the heart of the pocket. <laughs> Played it well. The black only available into the left corner. Six. Seven. And you just got an extra kiss off the second red there that's spoilt position. Just caught one and eight, just caught the other. Difficult shot, this. But what a pot it is. Deserves to be on a red. Deserves to be on a red. Is he? 14. It's very unlucky he's not on that red into the bottom right hand corner pocket. There is a red into the right centre. Good pot. Yeah. Another pressure pot coming up. Blue up into the top left hand corner pocket. Bit of pressure on this one. Oh, well played. Well played. Twenty. Twenty-one. 
I feel Johnny needs to win the frame at this visit, you know, just for Project. his own bit of confidence and get a frame on the board quickly. Yeah, so I'm certain that's his intention. He's not had many chances, he certainly didn't get one in the last frame. And the last two frames of the afternoon session, he only potted one ball. 36. Got to pick it up now. Thirty-seven. Just one loose red left. Now needs an angle, possibly on the blue after this red. Forty-four. She's looking, having a look to see with the pink. Pot into this bottom right-hand corner pocket. any reds available into the right corner I'm not so sure from here but if he gets a nice angle on the blue we can certainly develop some 45 obviously a red will go 50 if you play cannons, you risk not being on one. He knew he'd be on this. Probably he'd like to have been on it straighter, having to go back up for the blue. 51. And now the wrong side of the blue needs a good shot. There is a red available, the one above the black. But uh, he's got to judge this line and length to get on it. In the end, he's playing the cannon. Has he got the cannon? He's got the cannon. Is he on the red? Oh, no! How can it finish there? 56. Isn't it always the way, Ken? When you need a bit of run, you never get it. Very unfortunate there. Unbelievable. But... I can just run to safety now. Try and get a red safe and have a look at his shot again. He's played it. Couldn't have played it much better, to be honest. <laughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan, 56. Excellent break. And an excellent finish, really. Tap on the table from Mark. So we Ronnie would be a little bit frustrated. He couldn't win the frame of that visit. And if he'd got on the end, red to the right corner, he would have done. But he put the disappointment behind him. And has played a good safety. And Mark's going to do well now to not leave Ronnie that second chance that surely will clinch him the frame. Yeah, this is a possible escape. And he's so normally good at this two cushion. Foul and a miss. Might be a free ball here. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. Oh, just gone past the brownie. <coughs> yeah, that's the famous two cushion escape. Side cushion, top cushion, just clipping those two reds that are close together. Underneath the pink to the left and Normally very proficient at this type of shot, John. He is, and, but Thank you'd you. always err on the side of either missing it the first time, because the one, last thing you want to do is catch it full in the face. So he's had his practice go, so to speak. Ooh, and he's still not judging it now. Is he going to leave a free ball, ball this time? Is. is it a free ball this time? No, Sullivan he's hit the yellow. I don't see any reason why Ronnie won't have it replaced. 64 points. Behind now, Mark Selby. Still 83 on.
Ronnie, thank you. We've got the perfect view here. Trying to hit this red, he's missed it. And that time, made the adjustment, but too much of an adjustment, and has handed this frame on a plate now to Ronnie O'Sullivan. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. trying to get that pink. It's got to try and get it as close to its own spot as possible. And of course, in a Thank direct you. line with the black and the top cushion here. Seven. 71 points ahead, 75 left on the table, so just this red. Eight. I'm sure he'd try and finish the frame here, John. You know, a nice clearance just to get his QR arm going. 15. Yes, he, he's needed 16. two chances, but that was through no fault of his own, just a bad run of the ball. But this is how he wants to win frames. Doesn't want to get involved in any messy frames at the end. Which, 23. Uh, We've had a few of those, and every, well, two in particular. 24. The second frame of the match and the sixth frame, and they both went to Mark Selby. Well, I don't think that's any coincidence. 31. Thirty-two. Well, I think this is telling Mark Selby something. He's going to have to win this match. He's not going to be given it. This has been a good frame for Ronnie. 58. I'm certain he'd have won it in one visit and probably made a big hundred, but for that bad run of the ball. 62. 67. 73. Good stuff from Ronnie O'Sullivan. He started off with a 56. He ended it with an 80. Excellent. Mark Selby knows that Ronnie O'Sullivan isn't going to give him this. 7-3. Yeah, that was impressive, I thought, there, Ken. You know, you could 
as we say, and we think Ronnie needs three of the first four, and to lose the first frame of the evening and not get a sniff of a chance, mm. I thought that was an excellent frame for Ronnie. Yeah, he's been frozen out, but a couple of good pots, and particularly this opening one, and it certainly would have made him feel better because these are the type of shots that sort of give you that bit of confidence to get you going. Uh, this is the first long pot. And then, of course, he took this... Uh, he was thinking about taking the green with the rest, but instead he took the blue into the bottom left-hand corner pocket to get onto the red at the bottom of the pack. And again, good clean pot as well. Because he's been frozen out, John, and when he was frozen out, he wasn't... He, Any time he was getting in, he was making a few mistakes. He just needed just to get his arm going, put a few decent balls, and but for the bit of bad luck, he probably would have made the century, but still he'd be happy to win that frame. Yeah, not uh, let his opponent score a point. But it's so difficult when you're playing this man. He's on the top of his game, uh, Mark Selby. Doesn't give you too much, and anything you do get, you have to work so hard for it. Such a complete all-round player. Well, as I say, at least that sends a signal out now to Mark Thank Selby, you, and as all, quickly, that Ronnie's up for the fight. It's a big ask. Frame 11. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. breaks off and um, 11. So he'd be hoping to win the next couple of frames, whereas Mark Salvi would like to keep that bit of distance between the players, Corson. They have a go at this red. He's got a Safety shot, of course, but I'm having a look at maybe playing it with an element of safety, screwing the cue ball back towards the ball colours. Oh, well, we saw that red jump quite a long way off the Stop bed of the table. Stop calling out the players at the table, please. Thank you. Let's have a look at this red as he hits it. OK, he's sitting down on the cue ball. But look at the red jump off the table. Very heavy contact there. Well, I thought Rob got away with it, but Rob right. just spotted that red to the corner. Wonderful pot. And the bump on the middle pocket helps slightly, but I'm still not quite certain where the next red comes from. It's not a natural pot to bloom beyond the next red. I think he's just overscrewed that. I think he was possibly Six. thinking of being on a red to the left middle. So just a safety to play. Ronnie O'Sullivan, six. a decent safety now without red on the left hand side of the table covered by the brown so Ronnie needs to cover the path to that red and there's a red coming up the table he's got a good length with the cue ball <laughs> this red is cuttable to the right middle but you can't see Mark Selby taking it on with the cue ball being tight under the ball cushion. It's the advantage of getting a good length. Looking at 
possibly playing a containing safety shot, leaving the cue ball on this end of the table. Just having a look to see what he may be leaving. Ronnie, as you said, this red is cuttable to the right centre, but the problem is the cue ball is coming down and careering into the, the red right of the pack, so he's got no control over the cue ball if he decides to take that red on. But Yeah, the red on the left-hand side of the table, you may decide to take that on. Sometimes if you're in a position where you don't feel as though you can play a safety, you try and pot your way out of trouble. He's wondering if he leaves the cue ball close to this top cushion. Wouldn't there be a red to tempt Ronnie? If he could play the red on the left-hand side of the table and get position on the black, then you'd think it'd be worth risking. But if he can't get position on the colour, maybe not worth the risk. His decision, taking nearly two minutes to decide, we'll see. He's got the pot and he's got the cannon on the red, but he's not on the black. One. Mark Selby one. It's amazing, Ken, what can be potted when you're forced into it. <laughs> yeah, it was an excellent pot, wasn't it? Everyone has got to be very careful here. He nestles into the pack of reds on the left hand side. He'll be leaving the red into the left centre. He tries to. Nestle into the pack on the right hand side. He could possibly leave a red here into the right corner pocket. I think he's going to nestle in and just hope that he can leave the red to the left middle. Very awkward queuing. You know, he's trying to keep it low, and I'll tell you what, he's made a very good job of that. Although he's left the pot on. Touching ball, Mark. He's left a pot on here. Yeah. Red to the left corner. It's very awkward queuing, but it's a chance. Not much you could do, really, Ronnie. <laughs> He's potted it. Might not fancy the black, I'm just wondering if the pink's available. Looks as though it is. Played it in a more positive way, trying to stun it in as opposed to just dropping it in. First missed pressure ball we've seen from Mark Selby for quite a number of frames. Running obviously hasn't got the automatic angle just to hold for the pink, it appears. So having to use the cushion, that cue ball travelling needs to be perfect. One. Just a little bit too far for the blue. Although he may consider the thin corner blue while well, he's now. He's playing the, the yellow. Still off the side cushion for the open red. The problem he's got here, Ronnie, at the moment, the black is against Three. the top cushion and the red is almost holding the black spot. So back up again for the, the blue. Now, if he gets a good angle on the blue, he'll play the cannon for certain. And he's landed absolutely plumb. That's OK. <laughs> it was the oohs and ahs from the crowd. Because the 
wasn't many reds that came away from the pack, but he's managed to just be on this red to the right corner pocket. Doesn't have to do much with the cue ball. Back up, top side of the blue. A little bit too much left-hand side, but I think that red pot's the one that's almost on the pink spot. Twelve. Yeah, you play for a choice of red. Just come a little bit twixt in between, but I think you can control the cue ball. Yeah, quite comfortably. Thirteen. Would you go into the reds here, John? He's got a couple of loose ones available. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't risk it um, unless I had to. And the reason I say that is because it can always go wrong. Yeah. And as he pots one red, he'll re re make a path for the other for the corner, so... Just chip away at them. Playing for the pink could be a little bit risky. But maybe that's the only colour he can guarantee being on. Play for the blue, he's got to do quite a bit with the cue ball. Oh, well, that's the one thing he cannot afford to do. Ray O'Sullivan, 80. He can't afford the unforced errors. He was thinking about what colour to play. Thank you, Nutterman. Stop calling out, please. In the end, well, it did bounce, but... He decided to play for the pink. He got on the pink perfect, but missed the red. anything into the right-hand corner pocket. He's having a look at this red into the left centre, but it's a very tight angle. And he has to, if he does take it on, but he's refusing it. So not so much collateral damage from that unforced error from Ronnie O'Sullivan. That does surprise me a little bit. I know they're difficult just dropping those reds in the middle, but it looked as though he could have dropped it in. Now, well, this is an excellent safety from Ronnie. Could not have played that any better. And when you make a mistake that Ronnie made and, and your opponent doesn't punish you for it, you can forget about it. This was the red. I think he was in two minds as to what to play for, but didn't cost him. That's the main thing. Good reply, this from Mark. Yes, very good. Excellent length. Superb. He's got him in a bit of trouble here. You can see this red. In the top cushion just below the black spot, but it's got to be so precise with this safety shot. Yeah, if you just hit this a fraction too full, it'll come back up the table with the cue ball, and that's exactly what's happened. Four. Sure. Let's get in there. Extend the 
rest out. He's got to put this red and try and leave a nice angle on green or brown. Get back up for the... There's one loose red at the bottom of that pack of five reds that's available. Thank you. What sort of angle does he have on the brown? If not, the yellow would be okay. But I think he's okay on the brown. red available but he has an angle to go into the reds as well if he wishes and that's what he's done now how's his look it's not too bad seven that was a wonderful little shot nicely controlled Eight. Yeah, another nice positional shot there from Mark. Big chance this. Ronnie had first goal, so to speak. Just eight points behind now. Ronnie's going to have to sit there and suffer. Fourteen. These remaining five reds would be enough to clinch the frame at this visit. Fifteen. We'll change that. 20. He's going to need the yellow. He's two points behind. Four reds, four pinks. He's 28. That will put him 26 points in front come the yellow. So still needs one of the bulk colours at the moment. Thing you can think of that Ronnie might be pinning his hopes on. It's a lonely seat, that isn't it? Is the red closest to the top cushion? I wouldn't think it's going to be much of an obstacle for Mark, but it could be if he was to 26. come straight on it. Yes, now I'm putting this second last red. Imperative leaves a nice angle on the, the pink. Get back on this tricky red. On this top cushion. 34. Maybe a bit straight. Must leave the cue ball in a sort of high angle for this red. And again, well, it wasn't the greatest. Positional shot from the previous red. Didn't want to be straight on this pink. Quietly, but that's please. Two pinks now into that right center. are not easy and he needs a bit of pace in it to get back up for the blue. Sure. He's played it very well. One. Yeah, very good. Just a little bit too far. Just looking at the scoreboard. He won't need the black. No matter what colour he plays.
just a bridge too far. Now, if he's going to swing this round, there are three cushions. He's got to judge the pace of it. He's got to have that. He's got a good line. And he's judged the pace of it nicely. Well, what a steal this could be. This could be a massive frame in the context of the match. Look for all money that Mark Selby was going to win it. Eight. Up to and including the pink. Eleven. What the frame this could turn out to be. There may be many more twists, but this is a big one. Fifteen. A bit straight on the blue, but just needs the pink, only has to leave the cue ball somewhere around the blue spot. 20. Just to close the gap. 7-4. It's there! <laughs> what a clearance it was! He had to put a difficult red. We've managed to get it, and all the colours. Fantastic clearance from Ronnie. But it's still Mark Selby, seven. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. Yeah, two in a row now for the Rocket, and I just wonder what kind of lift that, that will give Ronnie O'Sullivan to see Mark Selby miss that straight pink to the middle. Just when you thought it was safe to go in the water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've got to keep the pressure on any player in the game. If you give them enough table time, they can come back and bite you. And um, yeah, Mark Selby would know the significance of that. It is it's sometimes tough to be leading from in front and keep the pressure on. It's a, it's a tough thing to do. I've, I've, I've got previous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You do have previous, yeah. <laughs> but the irony is, in it's usually been the reverse. It's usually been Mark who's usually been Mark who's having to do the chasing. I mean, let's be honest. When we got to that uh, World Championship final in 2014, Mark was three frames to eight behind in 5-10 mm -hmm. and won, what, 13 of the last 17 frames to beat mm -hmm. him. So there are scars there, deep scars for Ronnie, but now he finds himself having to do the same thing. Yep, and uh, whilst it wasn't a total disaster losing the first frame this evening, you were, as John Virgo said, he needed to win the first mini-session this evening at least 3-1. He's got the next two after it, so this is a huge frame that's coming up now. And I'm just wondering whether that pink missed in the middle has given Mark Selby a very long night. What's your feeling? Do you think he's got it right here? Well, th th there's, there's two things to say, as we said. Like Ronnie O'Sullivan can reel off frames quick enough that he can put the other guy into panic mode. But he's playing against Mark Selby, who's able to win in a variety of different ways. So it's wonderfully set up, but it's great to see Ronnie all of a sudden responding because we, you, know, you don't want somebody to go into the shell and throw the towel in. It's great that he's not going to do that. I assume he was never going to do that anyway, but uh, to see him respond and come back, how exciting could this be? Honestly, this is huge. OK, back we go. Frame 12, it's Thank the last you. before the interval. Thank you. Frame 12, Mark Selby to break. Not the best break-off shot from Mark. He's left the obligatory red. That was the first session pot success. 91% for Mark Selby. That's good. Ronnie O'Sullivan down to 83%. That's not good. But tonight, 97% pot success. And he's going to stay like that with pots like that. One. Cue ball has come a little bit close to the cushion, but tremendous pot. Now, if you're having a good day, you might be in a position where you can just roll this blue in and cannon the red on the right-hand side of the table. Well, he didn't, but boy, I couldn't tell you how well he cued that. Six. Under the cushion, thin blue, and just stroked it in as though it was over the pocket. Wonderful. Seven. Just a moment, Ronnie, please. 
Ronnie. Ronnie's getting this happen. I don't blame him. He's going back to his seat to sit down while the referee... The pink spot isn't available, but, but I must say, Kent, they do take a while respotting some of these <laughs> balls. I mean, it's in a direct line, as long as he's not touching, but... It's no harm to go back and sit down, because you're just standing there waiting. Born in energy. Just go back and relax, refocus. Yeah, and thinking about the shot you're going to play. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 13. <laughs> Fourteen. Yeah, Ronnie's playing for the black now. He, he may have to play a little cannon on the red to the right of the black. Mm, he just didn't get into it enough. He's got a red to the left middle, but that's not what he was playing for. Twenty-one. Big shot, this. Big shot, correct shot. <laughs> Fantastic pot to the 29. left centre. I'm taking this red away now. We'll release the black, of course, into both pockets. 30. We've still got quite a bit of work to do if he wants to win the frame from this visit. Needs that cue ball to slow up. 37. Lost the cue ball. That's no good. He'd be disappointed. Well, he played a, a blue. Not unlike this earlier in the frame. Now you have to play a similar shot. Yeah, I think if it was a natural, he may have played it now. He may be concerned that there's a possibility he could go in off into the right corner. It's the only reason I... I think he's not played the blue already. We'll see. Good queuing needed. And got. Couldn't have played that any better. Forty-three. Yeah. And he's just about on this red. That's his target. Sixty-eight. He's got a nice angle Focus on the black, play. he has. A nice angle on the black to just to go into the reds and try and develop some. Into the cue ball too much, but he has a red into the right center. 51. play for the, the Reds down here, but there's one in the ball, Ken. Just got to get the pace of this right. Doesn't want to hit it too hard. He's OK, and he's not hampered by the yellow. 57. So he can pop this red, leave a nice angle on the brown. He's only three Reds away from clinching this frame and going into the mid-session interval. Just two frames behind. So the first mini-target would have been achieved. Obviously, the lights have won all four, but winning three of the four, you felt was imperative. That looks good. It looks perfect. 62. This pink to go 69 points in front with just 67 remaining.
69. 70. Well, he's certainly buzzing around the table now, Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's, he's definitely got his mojo back. He lost it early 77. on in this match in the first session. But 78. He's refocused. On, John. 85. Yes, we certainly 86. do, Ken. And two of the best players in the world, no doubt. We want it to be a good match. And that's what we're going to get. I'd love to see the century now. That I just put the icing on the cake here in these. 94. For these first four frames. And that's the 101st century break of the tournament. That's Ronnie O'Sullivan's 850th century of his career. One hundred and seven. One hundred and nine. Well, this has been a fantastic break. A couple of brilliant blues into that right centre and a couple of amazing reds from around the black spot area into either middle pocket as well. That's been so fluent. 116. Great to watch. Yes, and what's impressed me more, Ken, is the fact, as we said, he lost the first frame. Would his head drop? No. No way. All around the houses. Slow down, George. 127. Perfect. Sensational play from Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's up for the fight. That's what everybody wanted to see at the Barbican. Mark Selby Stoughton knew that at the start of the evening. He led by four. It's now reduced to two. We have a match on. 7-5 what, 23 years ago when he won this title, mm -hmm. and he's still here at the age of 40, Steve says, doing this. Yeah, incredible, incredible, incredible talent. And, you know, we all say he's the most talented player we've ever seen. And to be still doing it at this level and competing and still the sort of the level of, of snooker that he's playing as well at, at this age is, is quite an achievement in itself. It certainly is. And we're back now, frame 13, Stephen Hendry. Dennis Taylor, I know you've been watching and waiting in the wings. It looks like you have inherited, in commentary terms, something of a classic. Thank you, frame 13. I Only yourself and to bring. think you're absolutely right, Hazel. Can't wait for the start of this final session in this year's Betway UK Championship. Is that interval going to change things around? Ronnie would have loved to have carried on. Finish off with 134 it was quite special, but uh, the first session 83% Ronnie was down at. But look at the difference, he's up at 98%. What a turnaround! Difficult to predict, Stephen, what's going to happen this evening. Yeah, 7 2 down. You can almost think Ronnie possibly relax a little bit and got nothing to lose. Back to 7 5. Now, obviously, he's right back in this match, so the pressure can switch back. Got anywhere near the pocket, it, it, it had to have his bridge hand on the cushion there. But what a miss! And look what he's done with the reds. Oh, Mark Selby, I wow. can't believe his luck there. 
be faced with a chance like this. session is going to be what a test of belief, character, Eight. will to win. Mark Selby, it's time to prove why you're the world champion and world number one. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. A little bit straight in that red to really force that cue ball through. He's okay in the black. Not perfect. Twenty five. This helps the black, removing this red here, frees the black up into the two corner pockets. And if you can get to 72 there, as you see on the left of your screen, it'll be enough to take the frame. Another delicate little spotting of the pink for Olivia Martel. We had quite a few of these in this match. Getting it in line, and then he'll just slide the pink towards the red. See it right in Thank line you. with the blue 31. and black. Thirty-two. And Mark did have the interval to forget about those two easy pinks that he missed. Precious little in this match, but well, this wasn't 39. straightforward, but I expected him to get it. But this one here, just put a little quick one in there. But long forgotten about. 40. Yeah, it's one of the biggest. One of his biggest attributes has been able to put bad play behind him. Forty three. Forty four. So important to try and win this frame at this visit, just to keep the memory in Ronnie Sullivan's 51. mind of that red that he missed by a mile at the start of this frame. Ooh, 52. That red wriggled in. Here we see again. Complete miss hit. We just hit the red straight on. Maybe the interval came at a bad time. He was flying just before the interval.
59. 60. Just a few more pots away from securing this frame with this visit. 65. Mark. Resumes for Mark Selby. Yeah, he beat Daniel Wells uh, from Neath uh, in his first televised match, 6 4, and he was uh, struggling a little bit. Just said he was thinking too much about his cue action. I had a, a good chat with him, and he said, Yeah, I'm tinkering Thank about and thinking about my cue action, and then. He quickly forgot about that and just went back to playing his natural game. 82. 88. He made 47 centuries last season. He's made 27 this season. 96. 97. So this is for his first century of this match. That's how you take advantage of an opponent's mistake. And what a time to get your first century of the match. Just when you lost three frames in a row and lost a five frame lead. Thank you. Yep, that's why he's world number one and current world champion. 105. He's now made 446 centuries in his career. 112. 115. And Ronnie made a break of 134 in the frame before the mid session interval. 119. 120 is Mark's best in this year's UK Championship. 124. Superseded that. One hundred and thirty. Well, one mistake. And the the world and number one and current world champion clears the table with that fantastic break of 137. He's now back three in front at eight frames to five. What were we saying about intervals and how it changes things? Extraordinary, John. Yeah, I just had a feeling. I, I couldn't say that he was going to make 137, but it's just that, you know, sometimes when you see a momentum swinging in a game, you think this would be a good time to get out the place. And he did. And, and as we were chatting before he came in, he's hit some balls, he relaxed, had a good chat with his pal and everything. And 
gone back to the table and it just sort of stops the momentum a little bit. And of course, Ronnie makes the one bit of bad cue in there where he hits the red and he's done the century break. Was that your experience, Steve? Did you always come into the practice room and just keep yourself loose during big matches like this? Uh, not all the time, uh, but on the big occasions, I think it was worthwhile doing it. Uh, it can sometimes settle you. Uh, but Ronnie's perspective coming into the interval was he played three great frames. He probably felt he was in stroke. Mm. Um, uh, Mark came in to knock some balls and get his arm going. The shot Ronnie was left with was very difficult. He was jacked up in the air on the cushion uh, and he smashed the reds all over the place. Still had to be potted, so therefore a, a good effort by Mark Selby. Um, and and I th you know, it's still not over now because Ronnie can still come out and do exactly the same. If he wins another three, back on level terms. Indeed, yes, but he's still now just two frames away from a place in history. And we've talked about this World and UK Championship in the same year, John and, and, and Steve, you've both done it, of course, but he could become only the sixth player as well to do the Triple Crown, that's the World, the UK and the Masters title, twice. Now, that's a very elite gathering as well. And then suddenly we have to start thinking about a bigger plinth for this man in the Hall of Fame because he is getting to that stage within the sport now, oh, isn't he? He is one of the, the true greats of the sport. You don't win those things you want, especially in the modern era, if you're not one of the true greats. Um, and I think he's going to win a heck of a lot more. I think his game stands the fact that he'll win a heck of a lot more. He just plays the game correctly. He scores, as you've seen, his safety play is granite. You get nothing given to you. And he's a wonderful competitor. His temperament is fantastic. It's probably as strong as suits his temperament. And, and he's just incredibly hard to play against and incredibly hard to beat. Ronnie coming back in. He's just seen his opponent knock in a break of 137. That's Mark's eighth century of this championship. And Steve, as we wait for Mark to come in, how would you characterise this burgeoning rivalry between the two of them. You've gone through various rivalries in your time, not least with Alex Higgins, and then thereafter with Stephen Hendry as well. And, and there's always rivalries that come into this sport that we really look forward to watching. Yeah, there is. I think the only trouble is there's so many great rivals, you never know where it's going to come from. I mean, it was not that long ago we were talking about Judd Trump, Ronnie O'Sullivan. So there's so many great lineups you can get, and I think that's the fascination of the Masters. Um, but obviously these two seem to have something special going on uh, and the more times they meet the more the rivalry I think it's our Djokovic and Federer we'll let you chew on that at home and we'll get Thank back you. into frame 14 of a possible 19 three in it again frame 14 Mark Selby to break Pretty open break off shot there. And he hasn't covered this red to the left corner, but uh, let's see what Ronnie's response is here after having to sit out and watch that clearance of 137 after he missed a fairly easy shot. Just getting a little bit excited. Somebody thought that was in there. Settle but down, please. Crowd have been fantastic. That's enough, thank you. Throughout this whole UK championship. When I say it, Ronnie missed an easy pot in that previous frame. It wasn't all that easy because his hand was on the cushion, but he hasn't missed many like that. I can Mark Selby knock a long one in. Now cued across that slightly. What's he left? There might be just one at the back of that bunch of reds. Everything else seems to be covering each other. But there's certainly one that'll go. That one just... It's almost touching the other ball. That'll pot. Excellent opportunity. 
how does he respond to that clearance in the previous frame? Five. The Reds are in a lovely position. The way this final is starting Ten. to build up, and be surprised if Ronnie doesn't win the frame from this visit. To be honest, I know it's quite premature to say it at the moment, but it's just the feeling you get. Both players are starting to hit top gear just at the right time. 11. Twenty four. Twenty five. You can see the average shot time, Ronnie's below twenty for the first time in the match. I think one of his matches he was down to something like 14, 15 seconds. But the standard now is quite incredible. Both players playing at the top of their form. So there's plenty of snooker to be played in this year's UK Championship, you feel. And once again, Romney's gone to sit down as the referee finds the correct spot for the pink there. Yeah, he's not even looking, Ronnie. I think he gets. Thank you. Sometimes gets a little bit annoyed how long the referees take to, to spot the ball. But yeah, Ronnie's shot shot time comes down when he's got complete control of the cue ball because there's no need to look at what the next shot is because he's always in perfect position. There's only this red to the middle and the one to the right of the cue ball that's available. The others are covering each other. Play for the one near the cushion this time. It's not a good angle to cannon into the five reds and pink. Has he hit it too hard? Just about okay. But he might have to screw back for the blue just looking at it. Or has he got a slight angle? Yeah, he had a slight angle to get on the black, so this is the key shot coming up. If he can cannon the two reds right in the middle, there's two reds. If he can hit them right in the centre, it'll be perfect. Just caught the end, one of the pulls up, he's okay. And he'll go into the middle. 61. Just a few more pots away from 
winning this frame with one visit. Sixty-two. Exceptional play from both players here. Really is. Yeah, this is what we hoped. These two players were matched up in this final there. See Ronnie getting the referee to get out of the way. <laughs> He's totally in his own. He just wants nothing in the way of him making this century break. Well, we could get a pair of roller skates for the referee. That might help. 74. Seventy-five. He's had 124 in the opening frame, and then he had 134. Eighty-one. Is this going to be another century? Eighty-two. He's made ten in the tournament so far. There's been 102 so far. 88. And if he could make 100 here, 89. I don't suppose he's thinking about it. This would be a century of centuries in the UK Championship. 96. The man beside me holds the record. 105. Superb, absolutely fantastic. 103. 105. The standard is quite extraordinary at the moment from both players. It looked... 108. When Mark Selby won the opening frame this evening that he was going to run away with it. But Ronnie had other ideas. 112. 117. <laughs> 123. That's another. Producing here in this UK final. That is brilliant. But Mark Selby still leads eight frames to six. Well, no wonder they're on their feet. This is absolutely phenomenal stuff tonight. And as Dennis was saying, it's his 10th century of this championship, his 100th in the 24 years that he's been playing in this championship. First appeared in 1992, and all these years later, he's still producing that quality. And he's only now five centuries short of the record of 105 set by Stephen Hendry. <laughs> Guys, what more can you say? 134, 137, 130. It just doesn't get much better than this, does it? No, it doesn't. It says a lot about Stephen Hendry that he's still at the top. <laughs> but does, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I remember back in the day when I think it was a match between John Higgins and Ronnie O'Sullivan when, when they were juniors. I think it was at the World Championship. And there was a couple of centuries made in a session. And I remember Clive Everton commentating, saying, this is snooker from the gods. Mm. Well, this is on another level to that. You know, this is from another universe. Uh, and we all know how hard the game is. But consecutive, three consecutive 130s. Amazing. John? Oh, I just uh, the gobsmacked at what I'm watching. I mean, honestly, I had to clap him there. I know he can't hear me, but I had to <laughs> clap him for that century because when he started off, I was joking, I said, oh, maybe it'll be another 130. It's exactly what it was. Honestly, it's just a phenomenal standard on a really difficult tournament table, and these two boys are making it look like a pool table. Yeah, and he's asking the question. Mm. Yeah, Mark, OK, yeah, I made a century, you made another one, but I'll make another one. Are you going to crumble? Can you keep it up? And this is the fascinating thing about top-level sport in any sport and how the occasion brings out the best play from these two men. It's brilliant to watch, isn't it? Back we go. He's brought a red up this time with the break-off shot and Mark's coming around to see if he can cut it in. His break-off shot has been very reliable.
White will be running up and down the table here, but you'd think he's bound to finish on a colour. on the way back down again. <laughs> Can't see that red. But there's another one he can see to the right of the pack, but what? Shot that would be to take on, oh, he'd have to get it. He's now having a look at the one I mentioned. He's not so keen on that, don't blame him. But where that red's sitting to hit the cushion and clip it in is highly unlikely. I think he's maybe just thinking about moving it. If he can hit the cushion and chip that one in, it would be some shot. Well, he's had two or three looks at this red to the right corner. He can't see an alternative, so he feels he's forced into taking it on. It's been a pattern, Dennis, in this final. The, the, both players, if, if they've either got the shot or they've missed it by a mile. Settled down for a while after that barrage of 130 plus breaks. And, oh, that's a careless one. From Mark. Black doesn't go into the right corner though. The red preventing that. And the pink looks to be tied up, so we'd have to screw back for the blue here. Well, the look on Ronnie's face when he pointed that. He's so up for this. Watch this. There's a bit of determination in that face, I tell you. He wants this bad to beat the world number one Six. and the world champion. The final of the UK Championship. Seven.
12. Thirteen. Uh, if you can just go between those two reds and flick the other one, he'll open quite a bit of the game up here. Just played a delicate little cannon. Twenty. Twenty-one. And that in turn seems to have freed a couple of reds as one to the right and one just at the back of the bunch and to the left. Well maybe it doesn't go so that's okay, it goes to the right middle, that red. 28. 29. Now let's see how many he can develop this time. Just a few. That has opened the game 26. up completely now. Yep, here's another one, Dennis. Question of how many? Forty-four. In a minute, it only looks like a kick is going to stop. Forty-five. Either these players winning the frame in one visit once they get in amongst the black. That's amazing. Now Ron is just going one pot ahead. Fifty-two. Of Mark, but he's still behind. 53 60 61 <coughs> Safe again, so 68. The gap is just going to be one 69. frame. It's hard to predict who's going to lift this year's UK title now. Seventy six. Seventy seven. going to be 82. easy. What a shame. That would have been four centuries in a row. But Ronnie won't be too concerned about that. That fabulous break there gets him back to just one frame behind now. It's Mark Selby eight. Ronnie O'Sullivan seven. My goodness, from five frames down just to one now, and uh, another big break there. They really are both giving it their all. This is wallop after wallop, John. Yeah, Stephen got it right there. What a look on Ronnie's face when he put that first red to screw back for the blue. He knew he'd hit it well, and he looked at the balls as if say, you're mine. He looked like he was ready to eat the balls at the moment, <laughs> never mind pot them. It's gone supernova, Ron. He's just absolutely... <laughs> He's gone ballistic. <laughs> uh, it's just amazing to watch. What a competitor. What a performer. If he wins this, perhaps one of the best matches of his life to win. To well, play. I think it is the best performance and, ever. And uh, I think he likes a challenge. And <clears throat> sometimes in snooker, he hasn't been given enough challenges. He's relishing this at the moment. Once he's just got out of the hole that he got at the start of the, of the session, and he got himself going, he won, he won that first frame. Wow. 
you get the impression that having been overturned by a Mark Selby on some very, very big occasions in the past, he would just love to turn the tables and do the same thing here to Mark, you would oh, imagine. Honestly, he, he would be dancing around the place. He mightn't say it to you if you interview him, but he would be absolutely dancing around if he did it to him. Talk about the bite of being bit. Well, well, you actually mentioned that, and I just this is a completely new experience where Mark is concerned being the hunted rather than the hunter in this situation. This is a complete about face exactly. in these situations. Yeah, and uh, it does go quickly, as, as, as John said. And, you know, and Ronnie O'Sullivan, one of the best sporting geniuses the game's ever seen, one of the best sporting personalities the UK's ever had. It's just amazing. He gives so much entertainment to so many people. For such a long time as well. I keep going back to this thought that 23 years ago he's winning this at 17 and, and he's still there doing this. But, you know, I'm looking back at some of the matches between these two fellas and uh, most notably the Welsh Open final in 2008. It was Selby who forced the big comeback. And then the Masters 2010, Selby was 6-9 behind and won the last four frames. So he knows he can do it and he knows very well that Ronnie O'Sullivan is very capable of doing the same thing. Absolutely, and he's got the bit between his teeth at the minute. He really has. If he gets a chance in the next one, don't be surprised if there's another frame coming up very quick. OK, one behind now. Frame 16. Thank you. Frame 16. Mark Selby to break. So off we go then with frame 16. And Mark hasn't got the white over behind the yellow. He's left that pot for the left corner. Um, he can get round the back of the black and red. He could do with a kiss on the yellow, but not like what? that. Well, in an exhibition or in practice, you pot the brow in the middle and screw the cue ball off two cushions. This is not an exhibition, is it, Stephen? Oh, he's been so lucky. Ronnie O'Sullivan won. He's been so lucky. Thank you. Oh, settle down, please. In front of the cue ball. Just over four hours of fascinating snooker. All kinds of snooker. Big breaks, tactical play, we've had everything. Thank you. Well, I think a lot of people thought he'd missed that. Let's have another look. Went in off that left angle, didn't expect that to drop. So how costly is that miss on the brown? It was a, a very, very high percentage. Difficult shot that he tried there to screw back off the balk and side cushion. And Nine. Yeah, he'd like to be in straight or a little bit high in that black so he can play the red that's next to it into the same pocket. Uh, he's straight, so he can still screw back. I think the red goes. Sixty. I think Dennis Mark Selby would love to win this match and you know the battle 24. of big breaks because everyone thinks that he'd be the one to spoil the game in this match he'd be the one that he'd win the tactical frames but 
in a match like this where they're winning frames in 25. one visit. Love to win the UK title that way. Don't think he quite gets the credit he deserves for, for being a complete player. Well, I think he certainly gets the credit from his opponent, 32. Ronnie O'Sullivan. We heard him speak about Mark and say what he thought about Mark's game and how good he was. 33. While we were talking about all those century breaks, what about Fergal O'Brien against Barry Hawkins? He made four centuries in five oh. frames. That's a record for the best of 11. What a performance from Fergal that was. Yeah, five, five centuries in total, Dennis. Incredible. 41. Incredible snooker. angle the blue here he'd love to just maybe cannon the two reds to the right of the pink maybe he can go into the pink but if it goes in the right half of the pink as we look at it anything but the left half of the pink is good here and he's aiming low I think he's just playing for the loose red surprises me a little bit that's quite a big target maybe home to get a better opportunity to go into 46. them might not get it. Thank you. 47. Well, he's got a good angle. It's a bit more difficult than the shot that Stephen said from the blue was a lot easier, but he plays this so well. Lots of top spin and right hand side. Just watch the cue ball as it comes off the cushion and heads into the reds. If that one's not on for the middle, well, he's walking around the table. I think he may be on that one, but he almost 54. stuck in the reds there. Yeah, first glance, it wasn't the best angle of pot. Can't screw back for the black. Fifty-five. Uh, able to get top side. Of the blue or brown. I cannot answer. No, I'm not saying that. There's something about the blue, and but it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe it's not sitting on its spot, and Mark's thinking, well. How come it's not on this spot? But anyway, it doesn't matter. That's gone. The referee can't do anything about that. Mark was just uh, questioning that. I, I can't remember when it was moved slightly. Fifty-nine. So that uh, Brian that Ronnie missed when he attempted a very, very difficult positional shot on it is costing him this frame. Yeah, it was a, as, as I said, it's a brown in practice or an exhibition. You just get down and play that shot. And you can't say it was a wrong shot because the way he's played tonight, he's so 67. confident he doesn't expect to miss it. Talking about century breaks again, I'll never forget 1994, Stephen. You made five centuries in seven 75. frames and seven centuries in the ten frames that you won to lift the title. And that was against the darling of Dublin, 76. Ken Doherty. And that record has stood for quite some time. 
That was at the Guild Hall in Preston. 83. 84. We've made eight centuries so far in this year's UK Championship. 84. What a temperament. I mean, what Ronnie's thrown at him tonight. 91. 92. This will equal last year's century 99. breaks. There was 104 mid. 100. Absolutely. Incredible again. The standard continues. One hundred and seven. One hundred and nine. If he clears the colours, it's another break over a hundred and thirty. One hundred and twelve. One hundred and sixteen. It's just like a boxing match, isn't it, Dennis? One punch for one punch each. One hundred and twenty-one. Who's got the who's got the weakest chin? Yeah. Can he deliver the knockout punch in the next frame? That's the big question. 127. Another fabulous clearance from the world number one, Mark Selby. And that magnificent break of 134 means that he's one frame away from getting in and taking a second UK title. Four breaks of 130 in the last five frames. Absolutely extraordinary. And that brown that Ronnie took on, uh, clearly he was feeling pretty invincible at that stage. Was this the wrong shot to take for you or not? No, I don't think it was. I think uh, it's, a, it's a gettable shot and uh, he got good position up the table on the, the reds. Um, and at that stage, John, I mean, he, he'd potted so many balls, he must have fancied anything on the table. He just, he's playing like he's invincible, so he's thinking there's not a shot on the table I can't play, why should I refuse this? You know, and, and I don't blame him in the slightest. He won't, he won't be sitting there kicking himself about it, he just missed it. Why was it such a high tariff shot for him then? Because he's got a screw back, he's into, into half a pocket in the middle, and he's got a screw back with running side, so there's a bit of side on, it's got to zip off two cushions, so, and you've really got a cue through it, so it's not an easy one. We've rarely seen a standard like this in the closing stages of a UK Championship final, have we? Well, it seems like we see better and better play all the time from a lot more different players in the game, but this is just astonishing standard. And it's hard to judge who's playing the best. I mean, arguably, that's the best century break of the night. Yet under severest of pressures, mm. Mark Selby's pulled it out of the fire again. It's just Just brilliant didn't stuff. flinch. Didn't flinch, it's, did he? It's just amazing the standard performed. These two lads, they are monumental players. The only try I don't know which one's Djokovic, which one's Federer, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark Selby on the brink of a second UK crown and with it so many slices of snooker history. Well, Ronnie breaks off and he'll be hoping it's not the last frame of this fascinating final. Yeah, it looks like it's a possible two cushion escape. Try and bring the cue ball. The red is to the left of the buns, try and bring the cue ball back up to bulk. <coughs> oh my. Brilliant at this shot. A lot of time you'll err on the side of, you might miss it the first time, because you don't want to be thick.
Brilliant shot. So good at that shot. It's such a difficult skill. And we'll take that. He won't get any advantage from it. This easy shot into the side of the pack. Oh, he's going to get six points. Foul and a miss. Free ball. Mark Selby six. A little bit surprised he's putting a cue ball back because it's, you don't expect Ronnie to miss it a second time and he could perhaps put Ronnie in more trouble from a safety shot. It just needs a little touch more side, left hand side. Ronnie's aware to sit down again while the uh, <laughs> referee gets the ball re spotted. Mark, thank you. Safety shot, and there's Vicky there. And next to Vicky is Gareth Potts, one of the world's top pool players. Plays a lot in China. He's the fiance of Vicky's sister. Pound on the miss. Ronnie well, Sullivan four. Very rare. See Mark Selby miss out a safety shot like that. <coughs> Massive pressure now on both players. Mark Selby now to get over the winning line. Ronnie Sullivan knows that any bad shot could be his last. They've had so many terrific battles, these two players. Of course, the, the twice that they played in the UK Championship, Ronnie won on both occasions, but the twice they played in the World Championship, Mark came out of victor then. Wow, this will be some pot. Right in the jaw of the pocket with the cue ball. Wow, what a shot that is! One. Vicky was trying to stop the white from coming down the table there with her hand. Don't think he's got a nice angle on the green. Brown's tough. He's 
going to come have to play this with lots of top spin left hand side. Well, he didn't try and do too much with the cue ball there. Just left himself a medium range red to the right corner. And just made oh. sure of the green. Not sure if the black's available to left corner. Now he's aiming low on the cue ball, so I think he's screwing back for blue. In fact, he was able to cannon that red lever, pink to the left middle. Right in the middle of the pocket. What a clean pot that was. Normally brilliant at closing the match out, Dennis Marks LB into. Well, he's so used to doing it, Stephen. We always say it. The hardest frame to win is the one to take you over the winning line, but these players are so good and they have done it so many times. He's missed another pink. That's three pinks I can remember Mark missing. Two in the other middle pocket. And I don't think anybody's seen this coming here. Luckily for him, he didn't drop on the red as he intended. possibility of the plant. He'll be concentrating more on getting a good cue ball. Yeah, he was just aiming the first red to part of the cushion where he'd have to aim that so that he could give himself a possible chance. Just the way he's queuing up there, he's just picking a spot to the left of the pocket, but it'll be more about the safety shot if he gets the plant well. it will be quite exceptional, really. Far away, the green may come to his rescue. I think it has. That was funny when that cue ball was on the way to where it ended up, watching Ronnie's face. He watched it the whole way. He knew where it was going to end up. Well, what a difficult spot he's in now. He's going to have to bend it round the green and see what he can do with that red that's over the pocket. But it's such a, a big swerve shot because if he plays down off the red, he can get past the blue. But if he plays down the table, he's just going to stick that red up. It's a big swerve, as you can see. You've got the perfect picture there. He's potted it. That's <laughs> a smile from Mark Selby. In this match, every every shot gets a reaction from each player. <laughs> Mark Selby came to the table thinking he was going to be on this red, but it just wasn't. There's not a plan there, surely. 
Oh, the plant can be made, but can he see enough of the first red? He doesn't think so. There's a target behind the pink, and then you've got the blue and yellow in a good position as well for the safety shot. He's trying to get behind the pink, but I think he's going to okay. cannon it on the way down. but he'd have to knock the red in front of it onto the two reds, so that's definitely not on. I like that shot, even if he kisses the green. He purposely brought the black into play. He had preferred to miss the green, but uh, that one shot has opened this end of the table up. give now to get that cue ball tight and behind the brown. He's not far away from there. He's got it in behind the brown. <laughs> and the seven times former world champion said, what a player we'd give to get the white in behind the brown. Didn't expect him to get in there from the position he was in. Best safety shots of the match, this one. Stunning shot. Is it going to be a frame winner? Come on, Dennis, get your pen out. Well, I'm just looking at the table, though. There's not one colour on its own spot, which is very unusual this early on. He's just going to play it to land on the left of the three reds. I haven't got time to get my pen out, but he's played a good one. I say he's played a good one. The red on the pink spot will go in the middle pocket, but wow. Well, he looked playing the safety off the red that was near the black. He's now back for the difficult one into the middle pocket. No, that was a risky one. Now, he may have... Well, I was going to say that red that was near the black was always going to be on. And one good long pot here. And every chance for Mark Selby in this frame a frame that will give him the title.
the chances there now. They're not straightforward. A lot of work to do. I think he's just come far enough to leave that red. Eight. There you see it. Just wants to leave the cue ball more or less where the red is. You want to go into those four reds near the pink spot. Nine. And if this works out, what an opportunity. Or does a red pot to the same pocket? It does. Why do they come high enough with the cue ball though? Judging by his 16. reaction, no. Can't play for the black. That makes a big difference. Now he's got to screw all the way up the table. Seventeen. Must be a little straight on the blue for him to be looking at the green there, but uh, I think he can force it over. Yeah, he's got an angle to get over behind the red. No problem whatsoever. Well, I think I had a small panic there. 22. I don't think he wanted to be anywhere near that brown with the cue ball. He's obviously landed very straight on this red. You have to screw back for the brown in the same pocket. Oh, he's got a bit of angle, shouldn't be a problem. He's just, I think, steadying himself. He's not rushing into anything here. He knows that this frame will give him his second UK title. So he's just taking his time. He's got a slight angle. He can, he can force this red in and get on the brown. He'd love to have been able to force it in and maybe even get on the pink, but... Uh, the pink back on its spot might just block the path for a red that's near the pink spot. The little triangular reds, it looks like there's one of them will go. But he's taken an awful long time over a, a fairly straightforward shot, you would have to say. With the cue power that he has, shouldn't be a problem, this. Twenty-three. Now we know now whether that red to the right of the little triangle of reds will go. He's round looking again. If it does, it clears the other two reds for the opposite corner. Well, there it looks. It's not, it's not an easy positional shot. He's got to get correctly on this red. Sure. 27. Has he got the angle just to brush off those other two reds and stay on the black, or does he have to go back for blue? Decent positional shot here. As you see, the two reds above the black don't pot to the left corner, so I may have to play some sort of cannon here on the red that's to the right of the three in the cushion. And if this goes right, you have to say it's a match winning chance. Certainly not rushing things. He's making absolutely certain, and I don't blame him. He knows that he could clinch the title with this visit. Ronnie can only sit and hope that something goes wrong. He's going to catch this half ball on the left-hand side of it. Perfect. Great shot. 
absolutely perfect. 35. Thirty-six. Yeah, and I think that very risky shot that Ronnie took on to the middle. Just unbuttoning his waistcoat, so that gives you 46. a little indication that he doesn't expect Mark Selby to slip up here. Forty-four. Fifty seven ahead. This red fifty one. The blue would be enough. And what a final 52. these two players have provided. Ronnie's had three century breaks. Number one, Ronnie O'Sullivan's thrown at him tonight, and he's just proved he's the best player in the world, and that's what it means to him. Huge admiration for what Mark Selby's done here. 65. It looked like it was going to be 66. all one-way traffic when he led 7-2, but Ronnie came storming back with some amazing snooker, but this is why this man is world number one and current world champion. He is a class act. 's had a terrific support here this evening but also Mark Selby's got a 81. lot of fans they appreciate good snooker and they have seen some of the best snooker you could ever wish to see 82 it's on all gone very quiet at the moment but in a few minutes time 87 I'll lift the roof. If he could get a century, it would beat last year's 104 centuries. And he wants to finish in style. And he's certainly doing that. 92. We talked about how good he was tactically, but he's shown us here that he as one of the top break builders of all time as well. 96. Absolutely <laughs> superb from Mark Selby. <laughs> An exhibition shot to get on to the black. Seven. Just the sixth player to lift the world title and the UK title in the same season. Well done to Mark Selby. It's been a superb final. A big smile from Ronnie O'Sullivan. That's nice to see. We've had everything. We've had tactical play. We've had a barrage of century breaks. But Mark Selby must be absolutely delighted. He lifts the Betway UK title for 2016. And he's... Drinking to the crowd, they're all standing up. Superb. And there comes Vicky, 
and baby Sophie Marie. Well done to Mark Selby, unlucky to Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ladies and gentlemen, what an epic final. And I wonder if I can just grab a word with Ronnie. Ronnie, what a chase tonight. An absolutely fantastic final, a wonderful standard. You couldn't have asked much more of yourself tonight. It just wasn't close enough, but you got oh so close. Yeah, no, I just want to say well done to Mark. You know, he was the best player all week. He played fantastic today, deserved his victory. And, um, you know, he's joined the club now of double champions of all the... Um, Majors, you call it, dear? Triple Crown, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's a fantastic night for him, and I've had a great week, you know. It's been like a, an all-expenses-paid holiday for me. <laughs> um, I, I've been home seven days since September the 8th, and everywhere I've gone, it's just been like one massive holiday. So I'm in Barnsley next week, so I'll go and see a few mates from Sheffield, and then I'll be going to Glasgow the week after with the Eurosport lads. So I've, I'm having a good time, and, you know, I enjoyed today, and the crowd have been fantastic, and, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> it's just... Um, you know, to, 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 to win a match like today, you know, um, I, I, missed, I missed too many, I scored all right, but I just missed too many easy balls, you know, when I was in or, you know, um, and, and you can't afford to do that, you know, you can make all the breaks in the world, but if you start giving your opponent confidence and, and, and easy chances, they're going to just uh, annihilate you. And I, I think I've done all right considering he's world number one so far ahead of everybody else. So I put, I, I put up a bit of a show and... Um, I just hope everyone had a good time watching it and, and enjoyed the match. So, um, go on, go, go and speak to Mark. Exactly. Can I just say that this man has been entertaining us in this UK Championship since he was 17 years of age, 23 years ago, and to still be doing it at age 40. Thank you on behalf of everyone, Ronnie. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Two Time UK Champion. Mark, that's got to be one of the greatest finals you've ever been a part of, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I mean, to play Ronnie in any game, not, not just a major final, but any match you play, it's always a great atmosphere and it gives you a buzz and uh, makes you want to play well. And like you say, I know I had to be on top of my game today because if, if I only played 50 or 60 percent, then obviously I wouldn't have won. And in terms of the standard that you both reached, there were four plus 130 breaks in five frames. It was an incredible burst of scoring. But from your perspective, playing this fella, so often you've been the hunter trying to track this fella down. Today it was the opposite rule. How comfortable was that? Well, I'm, I'm not too sure about that. I mean, in my eyes, he's still, him and Stephen Andrews, like two of the greatest players to ever play the game. So, uh, <laughs> so as I say, to play him in major finals, I've played Ronnie now in the World Final, in the Masters Final and in the UK Final, so it's a fantastic feeling. And you've carved another couple of really good pieces of history for yourself. You've become the sixth man to win the World and UK titles in the same year. And as Ronnie says, it's, it's Triple Crown, two of them, multiple Triple Crown champion. I wonder how much of a buzz these milestones give you. Yeah, it feels great. I mean, playing, like you say, in the major tournaments live on BBC, if you can't get yourself motivated for them and then you shouldn't be playing the game. But I'd just like to say just one big, one big thing. Obviously, my friend Bobby Lee, who, who lives out in China, travels quite a lot with me in China. And he was here this week up until midweek, and he had some tragic news for him and his wife, so he had to fly back. So, uh, yeah, it's not good. So, uh, Bobby, if you're watching, mate, this is you and Jing Jing. Thank you very much. Cheers, Mark. You're UK champion. Well done. Thank you, Mark. Please welcome your presentation party, Jason Ferguson, Chairman of the WPBSA, and Alan Alger, Head of PR at Betway. The runner-up receiving the silver medal and a cheque for £75,000, Ronnie O'Sullivan. receiving £170,000, the trophy and the title, 2016 Betway UK champion, Mark Selby. One 
once again, your champion, Mark Selby. time great and we mustn't underestimate this achievement because we're talking about this plinth in the hall of fame and having to make it a bit bigger he really has he's enhanced his cv to such a huge degree tonight steve yeah and i think uh, whilst obviously it's difficult to judge eras i think he's certainly one of the greats already uh, you know, if he doesn't know how great he is i think you should just watch the tape of that match <laughs> How would you sum that match up tonight for a One shot? of the finest games of snooker I have ever seen. The evening session tonight was just snooker from the gods. It really was. The standard, the quality, the temperament, everything about that match tonight from both players was just stupendous. I mean, the standard was so high, and, and it's going to be hard to top that in the final that we watched this season. It really was that good. Ronnie threw everything at him this evening, and he's turning 41 tomorrow. He's still a big factor in the game. How many more big finals can he take part in, do you think? How much is left in Ronnie? Ronnie can still produce it, and I think that's shown it. He, he threw everything at Mark Selby, and it took a, a, a money.